in 2018. But the new addition, well, that's the Crimson Storm of Southern Nazarene. Hey, Southern Nazarene, it is a ground and pound style of offense. They love to run the football and play some good defense. Emporia State, get ready. This is an air it out show. Should be a lot of fun. They've got a lot of weapons to choose from. They certainly do. It's going to be a contrast in styles, but we know one thing. There's going to be a lot of points scored here today. Take a look at our key players. First for the Crimson Storm, and who else but their star quarterback? Gage Porter, 225-pounder out of Elk City. He's a senior, leads the nation in rushing with 1,739 yards, averaging seven yards a carry. Also leads the nation with 25 yards rushing touchdowns and averages 158 yards per contest. He is a stud. Now, Emporia State, on the other hand, Braden Gleason, their quarterback, he can get it done through the air. Six foot, 195 pound senior, 3,700 yards passing, completing 74% with 41 touchdowns through the air. And get this kit, only three interceptions. And he can run too, 212 on the ground if he needs to. It's going to be a battle of the Harlan Hill finalists, the air versus the ground, as we take a look at our keys to the matchup. Yeah, definitely want to control the clock if you're Southern Nazarene and stop the deep ball. We just mentioned why. Force some turnovers. That's going to keep them in this ball game. As for Emporia State, spread the wealth. You've got plenty of targets. Get it around. Stop the run. Obviously, stop that quarterback, Gage uh, Porter, and then force him to pass. First ever meeting between the Crimson Storm and the Hornets. We'll have opening kickoff when we return to course again. It's the Fun Town RV Heritage Bowl live in the Community Bank and Trust Stadium at Tiger Field. Welcome back to Corsicana, Texas, ready to get underway. The Funtown RV Heritage Bowl. Glad to have you with us at CNBT Stadium here at Tiger Field. The fans from Southern Nazarene and Emporia State have made their way down. What a year it has been for the Crimson Storm, led by fourth-year head coach Dustin Hayda. His team is 6-5, six 5-6 and five, five and six a year ago, but they are finally over the hump, their first bowl game in the Division II era. Yeah, and the first time they're going to get a chance to play Emporia State, Talked to Dustin yesterday on the field. He's excited and, and fired up and ready to go. He thinks his team's ready to go. Taking on an Emporia State team that, as we said, they know all about this game. They know all about the postseason. They have been in the postseason, well, more than once. And they are back here again after winning in 2018, led by Aaron Higgins, coach of his alma mater, former quarterback for the Hornets. And, well, he has a very good one in Brayden Gleason leading the way. Yeah, Garen with 105 victories overall. You know, his team, 8-3. and three. They started hot 4-0, lost 3-4, or four, but have won three straight. And they're also fired up and ready. Check out these uniforms as well. I love both of these styles. D2 football, let's play. The Hornets in the black and gold. The Crimson Storm in the crimson and gold. And Southern Nazarene. Out of Bethany, Oklahoma, there in the greater Oklahoma City metropolitan area, will receive the opening kickoff. Hornets ready to get things underway. Kate Dodson, the sophomore from Argyle, Texas, one of the numerous native Texans on both of these rosters back into their home state. Underway, one time RV Heritage Bowl. Received inside the five. Southern Nazarene up to the 20, and that is where the Crimson Storm will start things off. Yeah, you don't see too many kickoff returns in this day and age of football, but obviously uh, the Crimson Storm get a chance to start on their own 20-yard line. 
of Gage Porter, the grad student quarterback, 5'11", 225 pounds, out of Elk City, Oklahoma. We mentioned what he has done this year on the ground. Leads the nation with 25 rushing touchdowns, third in the nation, 158 rushing yards per game. But he can also put it in the air, averages 154 passing with 10 touchdown passes on the season. You know, Elk City is on the far western side of Oklahoma near the Panhandle. Route 66 goes through there. And he's going to be a little sweep here up across the 20 and out of bounds at the 23. So a gain of three on first down for the Crimson Storm. Route 66. I'm thinking uh, possibly that could be a good over under, if you will, on this game right there. I think you're right on about total that. points. Yeah, there are definitely going to be some points scored in this. That was Asa Robertson, the wide receiver. There with the first carry. By the way, 56 degrees, partly cloudy here in Corsicana, just south of Dallas along I-45. Yeah, just about an hour south of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. A lot of young men on both these rosters from Texas, a lot from that DFW area. Porter with the keeper. He's going to find a way through up across the 30, the 40, up across midfield. Still on his feet is Porter all the way down to the 31-yard line, and that is Crimson Storm football led by Gage Porter. Yeah, we talked about it coming in. 1,739 yards rushing. Look at this big chunk. He knocks off a couple guys. Watch him avoid the tackle right here and pick up a few more. He is a hoss. Kind of reminds me of the bell dozer for all you Oklahoma fans out there. Yeah, appropriately enough, I know the Sooner fans certainly remember the bell dozer and maybe a smaller version, but Porter very similar in his running style. Able to rip off that one. So first and 10 from the 32. Snoo wasting no time getting into Emporia State territory, bouncing it outside and knocked out at the 28 is where they're going to mark him. Montrell Wilson with the tackle there on the play. He's got two picks so far this year. He's a senior. Aaron Fellows there. Fellows the junior out of Alpine, Texas, way out in West Texas. This is exactly what the Crimson Storm need to do. Go on a nice opening drive, come away with some points. It's an Emporia State, you would imagine the favorites in this one. But so far, Crimson Storm doing a very good job. One of your keys, controlling the clock, keeping that offense in Porter on the field. Yeah, they prefer a, a low scoring, ground and pound style. Second and six, upended at the 25. It's going to bring up a third and short for Southern Nazarene. As in a low scoring type of game is their best chance to win this one. But there he is faking it, running it right up the middle, flipped as he falls forward. It's like third and three coming up. Porter's 45 yard run able to put Southern Nazarene into Emporia State territory. It will be third and three from the 25. Man in motion is Fellows. They're going to hit Fellows. was the intended target. He just couldn't come down with it. That brings up fourth down. And that was a live ball right there, too. A rare pass attempt. They are in field goal range, but I expect them to go for it right here. Got to make that catch right there. So decision time for Coach Hayda. Fourth and three from the 25. And the offense remains on the field as you predicted my friend but the Crimson Storm will indeed go for it first fourth down of the ball game yeah their best plays Gage Porter take the shotgun decide if he wants to keep it there it is Porter with the keeper he's got the first down across the 20 still on his feet a stiff arm inside the 10 the five touchdown Crimson Storm Fourth and three, Porter takes it to the house from 25. Couldn't have asked for a better start. An 80-yard drive primarily on the ground, and the big man right there, Gage Porter, taking it in for the touchdown. That is his 26th rushing TD of the season. And look how he just sheds blocks. I mean, he's amazing the way he runs the football. Leading rusher in the nation. He's a quarterback. An 80-yard drive, 70 of which came via Gabe Gage Porter on two rushes. Fourth and three, takes it in from 25. 
The point after attempt up and good, and it's seven to nothing. Southern Nazarene. Great start for Southern Nazarene. You see Porter there very fired up on the sidelines and just how they drew it up that entire drive. You know, a lot of plays early on in that first drive are scripted ahead of time and the way it kind of worked out there on fourth and three. I think everybody in the stadium kind of knew they weren't going to kick a field goal. It was going to be Gage Porter. He gives them the best opportunity to, to pick up the three yards, and in this case, a touchdown. Now we'll see what the response is from Emporia State. What does Coach Higgins' offense, led by Braden Gleason, have in store? Jeff, neither one of these teams has played a game in three weeks. Both these teams' last game came on November the 11th. We wondered if there would be any rust coming into today. Well, for Southern Nazarene, I think the answer is an emphatic no. Well, and that's what coaches like to do. Also, when you're in bowl games, you get extra practices. They can look at some of the younger players, look at their future, but primarily focus on winning this game. Emporia State down 7 to nothing early. A little fair caught there at the 27-yard line. No trouble for the Hornets. And now there is that vaunted Hornet offense led by Braden Gleason. Gleason leads the nation, 74% completion percentage. He's second in touchdowns, second in total offense, and points responsible, fifth in passing efficiency. And we mentioned the ground and pound of Southern Nazarene. Well, it is all about airing it out for the Hornets. There's a reason why these two quarterbacks are the players to watch. Both Harlan Hill finalists, the player of the year, Division II football. Nine finalists, and these are two of the nine. The first play on the ground is Emporia State handing it off there to Billy Ross, Jr. Billy Ross with close to 700 yards rushing and five touchdowns. You know, Emporia State has outscored their opponents 142 to 86 in the first quarter. Ross again, the Oklahoma City product able to cut through one. Ross upended just across the 45, but it'll be good for a first down. Ross is a junior, 5'9", 183, very shifty as he runs the football. And here's again now making a catch. Ross had a heritage hall. He's going to be wrapped up and hit for a loss, flying in that time on the defense. That was Jalen Mays. Yeah, Jalen plays. He read that play well, made a huge play. And look at this, Emporia State, a little hurry-up offense here. Gleason dropping back. Has time and incomplete. Trying to link up that time. Just unable to locate his intended target, Tyler Common. And that is a man to keep an eye on. Common leads the nation in touchdown and catches with 18. He's fourth in receptions and sixth in receiving yards. Watch the play here from Josh Johnson on defense. Injury nice timeout. Hit. Really close. It's all about timing right there as uh, he is uh, from Border, Texas, and makes the big hit. He is a senior. Oh, Common. First team all MIAA, and what a season it has been. What a career it has been. We mentioned his 18 touchdown catches lead the nation. He is certainly one to keep an eye on, and if he is able to get free, the senior from Kansas is always a threat. Early on, Southern Nazarene on top, 7 to nothing. Emporia State looking to respond with their first drive. Looking for something to do? Downtown Corsicana is full of things to explore for you and the family. Have some fun with us by attending one of our many downtown events. Our downtown is full of 33 shopping destinations and 19 eateries. For live performances, swing by the Palace Theater, Warehouse of the Living Arts, or Corsicana Opry. Then take a selfie in our colorful art alley. So come and visit us in downtown Corsicana, where the history is rich and the future is bright. This is where initiative leads to innovation. Where character spurs personal growth. Where young tigers become tomorrow's leaders. Corsicana ISD. Every tiger, every day. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference 
has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating nine years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. Campers, Black Friday deals are happening now at Funtown RV. We're offering rock bottom prices on 2022 campers across all 13 Funtown RV locations. Don't miss travel trailers, fifth wheels, and toy haulers at prices so low you'll have to be in store to see. All 2022 campers must go. So get here early to shop Funtown RV's best selection of brands and floor plans first. Spend the holidays camping in the new Funtown RV and shop all our 2022 closeouts at FuntownRV.com. Southern Nazarene marching down the field in their first drive. Gage Porter leading the way, 70 of the 80 yards on the ground with the quarterback. Now Gleason and Emporia State looking to respond, but so far, Jeff, this Southern Nazarene defense doing a very good job keeping them bottled up, and so far he's not been able to locate Common and some of those big wide receiver threats. It's, it's going to be fourth and 10, and the Hornets see if they're going to be forced to punt it away. Holden Hill on that tackle right there. Fix, uh, very fitting name right there. Holden as they have pretty much held Emporia State in check here on their first drive. Ross Brungard, the leader, the special teams player of the year in the MIAA, leads the conference in punting. First time we will see him. And it's a good punt. Fair caught at the 11-yard line is where the Crimson Storm will take over their second drive. But... Southern Nazarene defense flexing its muscle, doing a great job. Now we'll see what Porter and company can do if they can add to this early lead. Yeah, controlling the clock. We mentioned that. That's their offense. That's their style, keeping it on the ground. You know, with 10:27 uh, to play here in the first quarter early on, up 7-0. They feel like they're in a good spot right now against Emporia State. Uh, the Hornets and Porter try to get a three and out right here and get the ball back to their offense. It really is. So Porter thus far leading the way. All the yards on the ground. Five rushing attempts, 80 yards for Southern Nazarene. In that first drive, average 16 yards a rush. Porter elects to hand this one off, trying to find a way through, and a good gain on first down. will bring up second in just about five. One of the Hornets lost the helmet in the process. And you see the run right up the middle. Good block, yeah, helmet comes off. He'll have to step out for a play. That's on Angel Ramirez with the carry, one of the all-conference honorees there in the GAC, the Great American Conference. But it's not just Porter. That ground and pound, a lot of talent for Southern Nazarene as Ramirez will stay in as the back. The senior out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Man in motion is Robertson. He's going to take it. Robertson around the edge, able to spin through one tackle, but loses his footing up close to that first down marker. It's going to be third and short. We'll see where they mark him. Yeah, it's close. I think he's going to be about a half yard short, but a nice effort right here. Just couldn't quite uh, get away from that last tackle, but it is going to be a first down. Well, Robertson able to lean forward. You saw it right there when he was going down, how the wherewithal to extend the ball. And he picks up the first down. Good heads up play. Already third first down of the ball game for Southern Nazarene. You see they've got a big offensive line. If you run the football, you know that's important. Have to have that big, huge offensive line. And you know linemen love to run and block. Porter, he's wrapped up. Maybe made it back to the line of scrimmage, but no, the ball's out. Hornets say they have it. Still waiting for a signal. And the Hornets do indeed the first turnover forced by Emporia State. And it's going to be great field position for the Hornets. That's Chance Rodriguez. Watch as he strips the ball out as he's making the tackle. That is a huge play for Emporia State. That's what they needed right there. Get a turnover, get momentum back on their side. And you see he's firing up the Hornets crowd here on the near sideline. The senior linebacker, the native of the Sunflower State, forces the first turnover. And it's going to be... First and 10 for the 19 for Gleason in that Hornets offense. A 
pitch in the backfield, trying to find some space. Strung out, no across the 10, and inside the five, it's going to be first and goal in Boria State. Great call right there. You want to get your fast players in space, and that's exactly what they had in Trendon Collins right there as he takes the ball, runs to the outside. I almost thought there was a face mask at the end of the play here, Kit. Check it out. No, I might have just got their shoulder pad. A man wide open, and it's going to be a touchdown for the Hornets. Billy Ross Jr. walks in, and they are a point away from tying it up. Billy Ross, he's been a big part of their offense so far in this game as he makes the touchdown reception here. He is a tailback. Comes out of that backfield, and it's got good hands. And just like that, Emporia State taking advantage of the turnover to pick up the touchdown and now tie things up. Uh, tied at seven, Ross with just his second receiving touchdown of the season. The turnover and the Hornets turn it into points. Seven all here Time in out. Corsicana. Culture and entertainment thrive in Corsicana, Texas. From community events, museums, festivals, and more, there's always something to do and new to discover. Our Parks Department keeps recreational spaces clean and accessible. The Richland Chambers Reservoir is a stunning 44,000 acre lake used for fishing, boating, and relaxation. Corsicana is also home to the Cook Center Planetarium, which offers many educational programs. Both the Warehouse Living Arts Center and the Pierce Museum at Navarra College feature collections covering a wide range of historical events and interests. The Downtown Arts District is a must-see home to the historic Palace Theater that presents world-class entertainment. For time with the family, join us for community events in the historic Downtown District. Derrick Days, the Great Pumpkin Patch, and the Freedom Festival are some of our favorites. In Corsicana, the adventure and fun never end. These are more than just the sounds of a safe place to go after school. These are the sounds of interest being ignited and of mentors making an impact. The sounds of tutoring and tech and health and fitness and arts and music. At Boys and Girls Clubs, we don't do just one thing. We do whatever it takes to meet the needs of every kid who comes through those doors. Because whatever it takes is what it takes to build great futures. Great futures start here. Hornet fans, a lot to cheer about a short field after the turnover forced by Chance Rodriguez and Billy Ross Jr. No mistake, his second receiving touchdown of the season. And we are tied at seven. You want to take advantage of the turnovers and turn those into points, as you mentioned, and quickly Emporia State right back in it with the touchdown. Billy Ross, whether it's on the ground or through the air, you can see he's a weapon for them. He can catch it, he can run it, he's quick. Now, out of the Crimson Storm respond. They will feel this one inside their own 10, weaving. And nowhere to go wrapped up that time was Braxton Bird, the freshman out of Amarillo, Texas. You know, back and forth, and just kind of how we thought it would shape up the run versus the pass, but turnovers change ball games, and it looks like Southern Nazarene was going to be in for another long drive and may well have been had it not been for Rodriguez able to strip Porter. Yeah, that was a huge play. Then it sets up Braden Gleason, what he does best, his 40 second touchdown pass of the season, and Billy Ross, one of his favorite targets right there coming out of the backfield. We mentioned Southern Nazarene, their first winning season as a Division II program, first bowl game. Conversely, Emporia State, eighth time in the last 11 seasons, they have earned an extra game. Their third straight postseason appearance. But right now, the Crimson Storm does not appear. The stage is too big for them. And here comes Porter again, busting free up across midfield. Porter, he's going to lateral it. Has a man, a little rugby move there from Porter and brought down at the 20. 
What a play from Gage Porter. Take another look at this. Look at Porter once again, sheds a tackle, uses a stiff arm, and right about here you're thinking, he's not going to pitch it off, is he? And there it goes. Aza Robertson with the uh, reception, and uh, he ends up picking up a few more yards. I don't know if Coach drew it up exactly like that, but they'll take it. And it is Tommy Zimmerman. Zimmerman running for his life, and we'll just have to throw this one away. Or excuse me, rather, that was, my apologies, that was Jarvis Davis, the senior out of Freeport, Texas, the backup quarterback trying to get away there from Ryland Miller. I think that was just a situation where maybe Gage Porter was a little winded. They brought in uh, Jarvis Davis for a chance to do something. He's kind of walking a little bit gimpy right here. That right ankle seems to be giving him a little bit of trouble. Yeah, Davis... Slow to get back to his feet. Miller there applying the pressure, but Davis will stay in. So, certainly something to keep an eye on. The 5'11", 190 pound senior out of Freeport, Texas from Brazosport High School. Yeah, Porter, such a big weapon for him to be out of the game. That's a big loss right now for SNU. Speaking of losses, Cepeda hit for a loss. Great pursuit there. Again, it was number 54 leading the way, Ryland Miller. Carlos Cepeda there. The running back, backed up by Angel Ramirez. We have not seen Porter return after that long run. The last three snaps have all been to Davis. Jarvis Davis stays out as the quarterback. Certainly something to keep an eye on for the Crimson Storm. Cepeda. Davis dropping back. Pressure comes. Davis takes to the air. Has a man complete inside the 10. And it's going to be first and goal for Southern Nazarene. <laughs> Nice job right there. So a little different style. You never know. Jarvis Davis comes into the game. Maybe more of a passing threat right here. He looks downfield, buys himself some time, makes a sharp pass for the first down to Asa Robertson. Again, Robertson with the reception, trying to weave his way through, and he's thrown out of bounds at the eight. So a short gain. And there is Porter being attended to by the trainer. Certainly something to keep an eye on. Looks like that right hand of the star quarterback. Yeah, they've got a towel on it right there. Looks like maybe his, uh, perhaps his index finger, pinky finger, somewhere in there. We don't want to speculate, but uh, nonetheless, uh, that's a blow for SNU right here. We'll see how Jarvis Davis works out, but let's look at that play again and maybe see what happened. You see he's kind of holding the ball out. He's already got his hand. It looks like he's already signaling that his hand was hurt prior to pitching. Did you notice that? And Davis wrapped up. Nowhere to go on second and goal from the eight. And that's going to bring up third and goal, and we will see what the Crimson Storm elect to do here. So I don't think Gage was actually trying to, he wasn't showboating or anything like that. I think literally his finger might have come out dislocated and uh, he was trying to just get, get the ball to somebody else. Maybe exactly right about that, instead Jeff. Of, instead of nine and a half. <laughs> the Porter remains on the bench, Davis in ever since. And you could see it, that finger just appeared to be dislocated, at least from our vantage point. Five wide for Jarvis Davis. Third and goal from the eight. Davis will tuck it to run. Davis up across the 10, brought down at the six. The fourth and goal now for the Crimson Storm. Situation like this, you, you want to just try to get some points right here. It'll be interesting to see if they kick the field goal. I think they will. I think that's the right call right there. Your, your starting quarterbacks on the bench, pick up three points, tend to him and get him back out on the field. They will indeed. They will bring out Adam Atwell, the sophomore out of League City, just outside the greater Houston area, attempting his first field goal of the ball game. And he sends it up and through and restores the Crimson Storm's lead. It's Southern Nazarene 10, Emporia State 7, four minutes remaining in the first. Yeah, they, they do end up picking up the field goal. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on their quarterback situation. Of course, uh, that's going to be a, a big situation. But, you know, I feel like, Kit, when you see these kind of injuries in football as they tend to it right now, the, the key is it's his throwing hand, but they don't pass it too often. 
So how much that's going to affect the way he runs it, we'll see. Let's, let's look at the play one more time. So watch his right hand, not the one with the ball, his right hand right about here. See how he's kind of, looks like he's kind of, his, his finger almost looks dislocated right there. See how he's holding it? And then he goes falling down. And lucky that wasn't a turnover right there. That situation, you almost just want to just fall down. <laughs> And Porter obviously known as a rushing quarterback and for good reason when he lead the nation with 25 rushing touchdowns, but he's underrated as a passer. He has 10 passing touchdowns this season. He also averages 150 yards a game through the air, so he can certainly throw it. Uh, he can, yeah, and he's a tough guy. You can see he's uh, withstanding the pain right there. And One more look at it. So this could be where the injury happens when he's trying to use his hand. Yeah, there, there it is. He's using his hand to shed a tackle and might have dislocated his finger right there yeah, that right hand of porter you know when you grip a football i'll tell you that index finger well maybe more the around the pinky those are important fingers for throwing the football no doubt about it they all are of course but that's where you get the the extra grip the velocity we'll see you have to keep an eye on that that'll be it Another short kickoff, so Gleason comes back on. He was stymied in that first drive, but that second after the turnover forced by Rodriguez, they had a short field, got the ball at the Southern Nazarene 24. They made quick work out of it. A little pitch in the backfield again, trying to find space. And up across midfield, down to the 42. A big gain for the Hornets, courtesy of Tyler Common, and he makes his presence felt. Yeah, that play's worked for him with a couple of different players now. Offside. And you see Common there defense, picking 44. it up. Offside's on defense, decline. so that's going to stand. Play. First down. Nice effort at the end, the yards after uh, contact. Well done. Common, such a huge threat, trying to get him involved in any way possible. Big gain there, brings up first and 10 from the Southern Nazarene 43. It'd be a reverse, trying to find some space again. It's a first down inside the 20 and steps out of bounds at the 19 for the Hornets. That offense in full gear, that time Kingsley Bennett, the sophomore from Garland. Well, we mentioned use your, your weapons and they've done that so far in this game. Love the play right here, great trickery. Dropping back, trying to find space. Gleason, he's flushed. Has a man complete touchdown, Hornets. Ethan Schultz, the DeSoto, Kansas freshman, puts the Hornets on top for the first time in the ball game. Yeah, at six foot, 185 pounds. The freshman goes up high, makes the catch. Well done in the end zone. And look at there, Emporia State now leading SNU. Schultz with his first receiving touchdown of the season. Extra point is up and good. And with three and a half remaining in the first quarter, the Hornets on top, 14 to 10. Got the title belt up in the air, too. Great buying time right here. That's kind of the key situation as uh, Braden Gleason buys the time, allows his receiver to get open, and great contact there for the touchdown. So a lot of scoring here with 3.23 to play in the first, 14 to 10. Now Emporia State on top. We, we had a feeling this would be a high-scoring game. Two different styles of offense. Be interesting to see how SNU responds, whether or not their quarterback, Gage Porter, comes out. 19-yard touchdown pass from Gleason to Schulte. The point after it's end good, and for the first time today, the Hornets of Emporia State on its top. And that is the question. Will number 14 for the Crimson Storm return? That could well be the difference in this ball game. Yeah, I, I definitely feel like that is uh, that's he's the heart and soul. He is the offense. I mean, there's a reason why he leads the nation with over now 1,800 yards rushing. I mean, he averages over seven yards a carry. He is just difficult to bring down. He is the, the leader of this team, no question about it. And you can see the right ring finger. It is taped to the middle finger on that right hand, I should say. Yeah, the ring finger, you're right. And that's a good sign, though. He's coming back. I don't think there's any question he'll be back on the field here right after this game. I think you're exactly right. That is great news for the Southern Nazarene faithful. Let it go. There you go. <laughs> and wisely does just that, does Donald May. 
So Porter and the offense for the Crimson Storm ready to come back out, trailing for the first time in the ball game. We said it in the open. We knew one thing for sure. There were going to be points scored, and it's so far living up to the billing. Yeah, and, and both of these teams, it, it might be different styles of offense, but it, it does start up front with those big guys right there, the offensive linemen. There's no question when you win more games than you lose, you have a pretty good chance that your offensive line has a big part of that. You know, the ability to move the football to run, but yeah, there you go. Gage is not in there. It's back to Jarvis Davis. Davis remains the quarterback. We saw him on that last drive, the senior and nowhere to go coming in making the tackle from the side there was number 36 David Jones the junior linebacker out of St. Louis mentioned that Jarvis Davis is from Brazosport High School 5'11 190 pound senior Brazosport kind of down around that Houston Galveston area along the coast of Texas uh, you and I had the opportunity to speak with the coaches earlier this week, and Coach Higgins really said he was, I mean, for a lot of his players from Texas, they were thrilled to be able to come back to play in front of some family and friends this week, a quicker trip, and you can certainly understand Texas is such great high school football, and a lot of these young men choosing the Crimson Storm and the Hornets respectively for their collegiate careers, but they're happy to be home, at least for one ball game. Yeah, and the sun just now coming out here in Corsicana. We expect it to stay out the pretty much the remainder of the game. Great conditions for football as we approach the 60s. No threat of rain. But Davis stays in. It's third and 10. Ball at Southern Nazarene 25. Davis has attempted just 21 passes this season. Has completed 13. Davis steps back to throw. Has a man complete. First down, Southern Nazarene. What a pass that was to Devon Hill. What a catch. He needed every bit of the six foot, 185 pound frame. He's at a Lubbock Monterey. Watch this catch into double coverage. What a throw. Donovan Hill there with a beautiful catch. Equally impressive throw, as you said, to keep the drive alive. Third and 10. Yeah, Hill shaking up too after that play looked like. So it appears like it will be a punting situation here. They're going to say that is incomplete. They're going to say Hill was unable to hold on. He was bobbling that ball coming down. I thought he was able to regather it, but it was not the case as a penalty flag comes in. On the offense, five-yard penalty remains fourth down. Things going from bad to worse right now for Southern Nazarene. Take another look. Initially, we thought this was completion. I thought the ground causes the fumble. That's what I thought, but the official saw otherwise. Maybe Just he'll... didn't think he had possession of it on the way down. I think you're right. So fourth and 15, having to punt it away from inside their own 10. It's going to be great field position for the Hornets. They will take this one fair caught just on the Crimson Storm side of midfield. It's going to be at the 48, so another short field for Emporia State and Braden Gleason. Yeah, the Hornets with all the momentum right now and the Crimson Storm, if you will, trying to weather the storm of not having their quarterback out there. But it's important for their defense to make a stand, give themselves a little rest over on that offensive side. Gleason, first and 10, takes to the air. It's common, complete first down, down to the 34. There's a reason common. First team all conference leads the nation with 18 touchdown catches. Yeah, great play. Underneath, able to find who else but Billy Ross Jr. Such a versatile weapon, Jeff. You mentioned it. Obviously, he can run the ball, but he has great hands as well. He does. Big part of this offense. And once again, running some tempo right now. Take advantage. Try to wear down this Southern Nazarene defense. Brings up second and four from the 28. Gleason again underneath, able to find his man and knocked out of bounds just shy of the 20 that time was Trinden Collins, the freshman. And Collins picking up the first down, nice effort right there with the catch and the run after the catch. 
First and 10 from the 22. Emporia State wasting no time. Collins the man in motion. Instead, it's going to be Ross who spins away from one. Ross still on his feet, able to turn something into nothing. That was all Ross right there. That play had no business picking up any yards whatsoever. Ross showing some spin moves right there. These guys can dance. I saw it on display when they were singing and dancing the other night. We'll have that at halftime. <laughs> we will indeed, so make sure you stay tuned. Look for all the world that Ross was going to be wrapped up for a loss, and this is just dropped. Ethan Schultz, the freshman who had the touchdown earlier, just couldn't bring it in. So key play coming up right here as we're closing in on the end of the first quarter. Third and seven now. It'll be third and seven from the 19. He play indeed. We'll see if the Crimson Storm defense can get a stop, maybe force a long field goal attempt. Everybody reset. Gleason dropping back plenty of time. Has a man in the corner and batted away, looking for Schultz again, but very well defended that time. Holden Hill, the junior from Baytown, Texas there. And Holden Hill having himself a great game. Perfect, perfectly played this ball as he gets a hand on it here at the back into the end zone. But that was a pretty well thrown ball right there by Gleason. Looks like a field goal opportunity here now, Kit. The Hornets will indeed attempt a field goal here. It'll be fourth and seven. It has. The accuracy and the distance to the Hornets, and why not? Able to tack on the extra three. And Dotson that time splits the uprights, does the sophomore, and it's a seven point Emporia State lead with just 26 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Yeah, Emporia State once again taking advantage of the opportunities. A short field. He started inside the 50 yard line and that's been the difference. The, the momentum has shifted mainly due to the injury of the uh, quarterback Gage Porter of SNU, but Emporia State has taken advantage of it. They've gotten the ball back over to their offense. They've had short fields and now lead 17 to 10. Well, we mentioned the Hornets, no stranger to the postseason. Eight of the last 11 seasons they have played in the postseason. The last three, they've been in a bowl game. And obviously, they're happy to have that extra game, said Coach Garen Higgins, but in Division II, where there are only four Division II bowl games, if you're playing in a bowl game every year, that's great, but you, you ultimately want to be in the playoff, and he said as much. Yeah, and in fact, they've been in this bowl game, particularly twice here in Corsicana, last time in 2018. Uh, Emporia State here 8-3 and three this year, trying to finish 9-3. and three. Yeah, In fact, they're the only team that has been in this bowl game on more than one occasion are the Hornets. They won it back in 2018. That being said, Coach Higgins has spoken like a true coach. He didn't, when I asked him about that win, he, it wasn't the win that stood out. It was the fact that they had a punt block. There were some issues there. That's what a coach is always looking at, the things to improve upon is Southern Nazarene looking to return this one, and that is not the right decision. They're going to be wrapped up in. They're making it to the 10 before progress, but what pursuit from the Hornets special teams. Yeah, Donald May, I'm not sure I would have run that one out right there. As in some cases, you just want to go ahead and take that ball and, uh, you know, let the referee put it out there on the 25-yard line for you. But credit to Emporia State special teams. They've made some big plays here uh, as we approach the end of the first quarter. I think that was Yancey Spiller, a freshman defensive back who got to him first, and then the cavalry came in, and, hey, there is... Gage Porter, so good news for Southern Nazarene. The star senior quarterback is back out after Jarvis Davis took over. Now we will see if there are any ill effects. That right ring finger taped pretty heavily. He will hand this one off. I probably stung just a bit handing that ball off, but it'll be interesting to see, you know, Emporia State's probably going to load the box up and really try to tempt SNU to throw the football. It'll bring the first quarter to a close. 27 combined points. I have a feeling we've got a few more in store. You're watching live RV Heritage Bowl. Looking for something to do? 
Downtown Corsicana is full of things to explore for you and the family. Have some fun with us by attending one of our many downtown events. Our downtown is full of 33 shopping destinations and 19 eateries. For live performances, swing by the Palace Theater, Warehouse of the Living Arts, or Corsicana Opry. Then take a selfie in our colorful art alley. So come and visit us in downtown Corsicana, where the history is rich and the future is bright. Campers, Black Friday deals are happening now at Funtown RV. We're offering rock bottom prices on 2022 campers across all 13 Funtown RV locations. Don't miss travel trailers, fifth wheels, and toy haulers at prices so low you'll have to be in store to see. All 2022 campers must go. So get here early to shop Funtown RV's best selection of brands and floor plans first. Spend the holidays camping in a new Funtown RV and shop all our 2022 closeouts at FuntownRV.com. What started as a small Texas bakery has blossomed into a global mail-order business. Made daily from scratch, using only the finest ingredients, our baked goods are shipped to all 50 states and 196 foreign countries and are backed by a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Welcome back, beautiful Corsicana, Texas, the Funtown RV Heritage Bowl. Big thanks to all of our sponsors, Corsicana Visitors Bureau, Community National Bank and Trust, College Street Bakery, Schulman's MBG, All-in-One Family Fund, and, of course, Chick-fil-A. Chick yes, sir. Yeah, well done. Uh, great opportunity there to kind of get the flag waving on a fairly windy day out here in Corsicana. Southern Nazarene back out on the field. It'll be second and six from their own 14. Porter back on after a injury to his right ring finger early on that big 45-yard run that ultimately set up his own 24-yard touchdown. Jarvis Davis' backup came on for that last drive. Look at the extra effort right here to pick up some yardage. Looked like he was going to be down on a couple of occasions and fights his way to within a couple yards of the first down mark. Brings up third and two from the 18. A third and very manageable. Cepeda in as the running back. Man in motion. It'll be pitched out. Trying to find some space and blown up. What a job for the Hornets flying in that time. Jared Joseph, the junior from Nyack, New York, on the tackle. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, Jared Joseph, watch him. He has to get off the block right here. And that's how you get off a block. Just initiate the contact, and then he makes the tackle. I love it. He didn't get off the block. He went right through it. Porter trying to keep it. A little tush push there. Shades of Jalen Hurts. Yeah, legal procedure here on Southern Nazarene. That's exactly what it's going to be, you would imagine. So Southern Nazarene will go from fourth and a one at their own 19, and they're going to have to back up. This might be on the center. Got to look excited. On the offense. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. So fourth and one turns to fourth and six. That is a big change for Porter as now it appears the punting team will come out. Hornets fans here in attendance informing Southern Nazarene offensive line that um, I don't believe that's permissible. Yeah, you can't do this. Great attendance for both schools. Their fans making the trip down. Glad to have you with us, wherever you may be joining us from as well. Punting it away just inside his own end zone. And it will take a Crimson Storm bounce all the way inside the 20. And it's going to be downed at the 16-yard line. What a punt. He's punting from his own end zone. And Emporia State will start on their own 16. That's a weapon. Take advantage of those ball rolls. You gotta love it. about flipping the field. Yeah, and it was kind of an end-over-end end punt, but 
definitely got a friendly role, and that's what Southern Nazarene needed for sure. That is exactly what the Crimson Storm needed right there. A huge punt. Thought it was going to be another short field for Gleason and the Hornets, but not the case. Gleason back out, first and 10 from his own 16. The handoff, who else? The star running back, Billy Ross Jr. picking his way through up across the 20 to the 23. Ross so elusive when he runs the football. Great vision, really sees the hole, makes new ones as he goes. It'll be second and three. To Ross able to pick up seven on first down. Again to Ross they go, keep it on the ground. This time nothing doing and he may be, may pick up a yard at best. It's gonna be th third and short now for the Hornets. Comes a nice effort from Emmanuel Abini there to make the tackle. Third and two, Gleason to the air. Has a man complete. Did he step out of bounds? No. What a catch. Tommy Zimmerman, the junior from Oakland Park, Kansas, keeps the drive alive and in to Southern Nazarene territory. Look at the footwork right here. Somehow stays in bounds. That's incredible. And that quick strike offense just continues. Down inside the Southern Nazarene, 34, first and 10, pick up a five, down to the 29. Leeson and the Hornets wasting no time. Another little pitch, trying to find a way through. Bennett, Bennett, inside the 20, down to the 15. First down, Hornets. Kingsley Bennett, sophomore, he's 5'7", lots of speed. At a Garland, close to here in, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Gleason has a man, complete little slant underneath. Schultz, one of his favorite targets. Freshman from DeSoto, Kansas. It's gonna bring up first and goal from the four. Impressive drive here for Emporia State. Started on their own 16-yard line and now they're quickly moving down to the four of SNU. So the Nazarene, an 84-yard punt. The Hornets wasting no time marching down the field, looking to extend this seven-point lead. Gleason takes to the air, has a man all in and out of the hands, wide open was common, a rare drop from the star wide out. Yeah, he knows he should have had that one right there. He goes up high, good pass. If you get your hands on it, you should catch it. Sometimes when that ball's right around your face mask, it's difficult. Do you want to maybe even try to catch it up high, flip your hands? Looks like it was just uh, one of those things that happens every now and then to a receiver. Second and goal from the four, trips to the top. Gleason. Surveys now flushed. Gleason has room and he'll take it in himself for the touchdown. Well done with everybody on the right side of the field. Gleason knew all he had to do was beat that defensive end. He does it, picks up the touchdown. Great Gleason with his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Yeah, Gleason, he, he, he got his hair cut for this game, believe it or not. He, I know you can see a little bit of a, a do there, but uh, it was much longer during the regular season, I might add. I think he was telling us he didn't want to cut it during the regular season, but hey, three weeks off, why not? Point after attempt up and good, and Emporia State on top by two scores, 24 to 10. Gleason, we know we can do it with the arm. He can do it with the legs as well. Hornets extend the lead. 10.55 remaining in the first half. Hi, my name is Katrina, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A nugget trays is that they're a mouthful of awesome. That first bite gives you that full flavor. During the holidays, Chick-fil-A catering can help with bringing my family together, and that makes your heart sing. Hey, this is Brian, and the little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Nugget Trays is the joy that it brings to me and everybody around me during the holidays. 
They're warm, juicy, and delicious. When you walk in the room, everybody just starts smiling. What does community mean to you? At Community National Bank and Trust of Texas, it means serving our neighbors. It means partnering with local businesses and organizations. It means exceptional service and a friendly face. It means growing to better serve our fellow Texans. That's my community. My community. My community. My community. My bank. Community National Bank and Trust of Texas. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Limited. Shulman's Movie Bowl Grill offers you a premier dine-in theater experience. Whether you order at the concession stand or from the comfort of your fully reclining seat in the auditorium, delicious items from Billy's Grill and Bar will be delivered directly to you. At Shulman's, we work hard so you can relax and enjoy the entertainment. There's no better place to see a movie than Shulman's Movie Bowl Grill. Welcome back. Beautiful course again at Texas, the Funtown RV Heritage Bowl here. Glad to have you with us at CNBT Stadium, Tiger Field, just about an hour south of Dallas. Southern Nazarene star quarterback Gage Porter. You see the tape on that right ring finger. And that, at least thus far, has been one of the big stories, particularly for the Crimson Storm, as they marched down the field in their first drive but then appeared to injure it on the helmet of one of the Hornets and one of his big runs. He was out for a drive. His backup, Jarvis Davis, came in, but Porter hasn't been the same since. No, and I, I clearly think that Emporia State is now really kind of loading up the box. They really are basically tempting the Crimson Storm to try to throw the football, but I don't know, unless they're throwing it out of some sort of uh, formation where, you know, you pitch it out to a receiver and throw it downfield. We're going to have to see because it, it's difficult to throw the ball when your ring finger on your throwing hand has got a lot of tape on it. Well, speaking of throwing on the other side, Braden Gleason, 12 of 16, 135 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. That is a 187 quarterback rating. Yeah, that's pretty good. He leads the nation with 74% completion percentage. He's already at 75. No surprise there for Hornets fans. And this is strung out, well defended. Nowhere that time for Aaron Fellows to go. Aaron Fellows, Aaron Fellows, carry, carry. And Aaron Fellows taking the ball to the okay, outside the here. I, I like the idea of trying to get him to some space, but nothing doing this time. Emporia State snuffed that one out. Jeff, you just get the feeling this is an important drive for Southern Nazarene. They need to make something happen. Obviously, a lot of ball game remaining. Still 10:40 remaining here in the second quarter. But as you said, Emporia State has all the momentum. Yeah, they've outscored them 24 to three since that opening drive touchdown from Southern Nazarene. Second and nine from their own 36. Porter with the keeper. Porter tries to bounce it outside, now cuts back in. Porter is gonna have enough for the first down. We'll see where they mark him, and yes, he does. Well done. Nice run right there. Kind of a zone read option. He's watching that defensive end there and decides to take off and just splits between the, the end and the tackle. Picks up the first down. They have to reestablish the run. They've got to prove that they can run the football and this offense is going to be in trouble. No argument here. First and 10 from their own 45. Order. Three men in the backfield. Porter, another keeper, and he is met. He will fall forward for maybe a yard and a half. They'll mark him with a gain of two. They'll bring up second and eight. You can see how the Emporia State linebackers are kind of cheating in, cheating in, trying to pick up an extra advantage. They're really keying on the quarterback here, Gage Porter. 
Right now, Porter, eight rushes, 145 yards, averaging 18 yards a carry, but it helps when you have his long of 59 yards, which we saw in that first quarter. Give this Emporia State defense a lot of credit. They've done a much better job closing him down, not allowing those big rushes that we saw early. Gonna throw it now. Porter, first time we've seen him try to take to the air, directing traffic. Porter almost picked off. Threw it into traffic, and lucky that wasn't intercepted is right there. Kobe Holly was in the mix, the junior out of Stillwater, Oklahoma. Yeah, look at Porter here, pointing downfield. Okay, I've got you. I was curious to see what kind of velocity he would have, and no, that was kind of up for grabs right there. Very dangerous pass. And it brings up third and eight. Holly almost came away with the second turnover of the ball game. Remember, the Hornets forced that fumble in the first quarter, and they had the short field, marched 24 yards for their first touchdown. Porter is converted just once on third down. Porter will keep it himself. He's got the first up across the 45 and down to the 42 to keep the drive alive. Amazing how he runs the football. I mean, just total will right there to pick up the first down. He looks downfield but checks down. You clearly see it's going to be a run from the get-go and fights his way across the marker for a first down. Obviously has the size, but his patience and vision is incredible as a ball carrier. Looks a little winded right now. He's been carrying this offense, not just today, but for a, a lot of this season, as Crimson Storm fans can attest. Ball at the 43, first down, Porter. He's going to be hit for a loss, nowhere to go, swallowed up by Declan Hobb, the junior linebacker. Yeah, nice job right there. I'm almost thinking a draw play or something like that might be a nice little alternative. Kind of get these Emporia State linebackers from cheating in and spying on the quarterback, Gage Porter. Awesome play action. Try to shake things up a little bit. Yeah, they're gonna need to figure something out because right now that front seven for the Hornets just teed off, pinning their ears back after the loss of three. Brings up second and 13. Porter again, no surprise. He's able to get back to the original line of scrimmage. It's still going to be third and long. A chin strap fell on the field there. Yeah, it's a big play right here as we're halfway through the second quarter. And Emporia State with all the momentum right now and the quarterback here for Southern Nazarene definitely feeling the pain of not just the finger, but, uh, you know, like you said, kind of carrying the drive, carrying the team. I think Gage Porter's looking around saying, hey, um, bring me some help out here. <laughs> Porter's still looking for his first completion of the ball game. It has been all on the ground thus far. Keep an eye on Dalen Smith, the tight end, number 84, right here on the near side of the field. Robertson, the man in motion. Porter drops back, and he's looking for Robertson, but just too far in front of his intended receiver. Fourth pass for Robertson, Yeah, underthrew that one just a bit. Bring up fourth down. Yeah, I really think that as of right now, uh, Gage is just having trouble putting any zip on that ball. I mean, your ring finger is just key when you're throwing the football. The Crimson Storm are going to go for it on the Hornets side of midfield. Fourth and 11 from the 44. Porter looks to run. Porter takes off. He's got a first down across the 25 inside the 20. Still on his feet is Porter. And it's a touchdown for Gage Porter. Fourth and 11 from the 44. And he takes it to the house. Play of the game right now. No doubt about it. I mean, just when you thought. Southern Nazarene was in trouble. Maybe they'd have to punt. Look at Gage Porter just taking the ball into the end zone. I mean, that middle just parted for him, the middle of the field. And yeah, definitely he's winded over there, but man, well deserved. The second rushing touchdown of the ball game for the Southern Nazarene quarterback. Second on fourth down. The point after attempt is up and good. 
And it's a seven point game, 554 oh, no. remaining in the first half. Crimson Storm strike back. Hi, my name is Katrina, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A nugget trays is that they're a mouthful of awesome. That first bite gives you that full flavor. During the holidays, Chick-fil-A catering can help with bringing my family together, and that makes your heart sing. Hey, this is Brian, and the little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A nugget trays is the joy that it brings to me and everybody around me during the holidays. They're warm, juicy, and delicious. When you walk in the room, everybody just starts smiling. At Emporia State University, we're building something special. Something that better helps you build knowledge and skill. Something that helps you build your voice, your connections. What we're building is a new way, a better way to build your career. We're built to help you build your future. Come join us. 554 remaining in the first half here in Corsicana, the Fun Sound RV Heritage Bowl. And Southern Nazarene led by Gage Porter, fourth and 11 from the 44. He takes it to the house. Jeff, the second time the Crimson Storm have had a fourth down, the second time he's running in for a touchdown. Fourth and two in the first, fourth and 11 in the second. That is just a huge play right now. Definitely the play of the game because that has kept SNU in this ball game. A one-score ball game. And Borea State. You and I are talking during the break. I think the Hornets stopped for the first time that Southern Nazarene was going to have to throw it. It was fourth and eleven. They dropped back in coverage. Everybody looking for the pass that never came. And Porter took full advantage. Yeah, almost like a, a design play where let's just keep all the receivers on the outside part of the field and let Porter do what he does best, run the football. Two star quarterbacks, both Harlan Hill finalists, the player of the year in Division II football, and you can certainly see why as Gleason is back out out of the shotgun. He'll hand this one off and making a great move up across the 40 and finally brought down after the big run in the first down is Billy Ross Jr. who just continues to impress. He is so shifty when he runs the football. Look at this little juke move right here. That is beautiful. Takes out two defenders and picks up a big chunk of yardage. Ross now just shy of 40 yards on six rushes. Think about this Hornets team, primarily a pass first offense, but when you have a running back the caliber of Billy Ross, that adds an extra wrinkle and a very talented one at that. Gleason tucks it himself, looks to run across midfield. And down to the 45 into Southern Nazarene territory. Yeah, speaking of shifty, no doubt about it. The ability to be able to run the football as a quarterback is so important. Both of these QBs showing why that is important. When, when things break down downfield, you've got to be able to get out of the pocket and run and, and keep the defense honest. First and 10 from the Southern Nazarene 46. And back to the well they go. A Gain of close to five on first down from Ross. It's all about the space for Emporia State. They, they've set it up to where they've got so many playmakers out there in the field. Just which one are you going to get it to? You know, which one is going to make the big play? 
Gleason out to Ross, a little quick hitter. Ross able to get away from one tackle, but couldn't get away from the second. Is coming in to clean things up. That time, so Kenyatta Richardson, Sam linebacker. Uh, Tate Houghton there as well, the red shirt sophomore defensive back coming up to close things down. Good pursuit from Southern Nazarene and bring up third and seven. This is a chance for the Crimson Storm defense to get off the field. Can they get a stop? I say that the way these two teams going for it on fourth down, there may be two plays remaining. As a man wide open, Comet unable to get away, and it's going to bring up fourth down. Well done. That was read beautifully by Jake Wright, the Sam linebacker there, making the huge stop. And it does bring up fourth and long. And also great job there on the defensive front from Jalen uh, Mays, number two. Mays, the junior out of Las Cruces, New Mexico. The Hornets will punt it away. One of the best in the country, Ross Brungart, the senior from Lawrence, Kansas. He will take his time before sending this one. And what a job. The special teams from the Hornets. Looks like that one may find its way into the end zone, but the freshman wide receiver, Evan Schultz, there down on the coverage team. Good punt Good by the Hornets. Hornets. I'm thinking the punter should have ran right here. What are you thinking? He had to get that first down. Can there he? was only one man <laughs> back spying the punter. I think you're right, Jeff. But I don't think he has the moves that Ross has. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe not as shifty. There's a reason Ross is a running back. And as good as Brungard is, I think he'll stay with the punty duties. Yeah, there was one uh, one of the Crimson Storm players kind of came up and saw what was going on, and he wasn't going to have it. Pretty even thus far. You look at total yards. Emporia State with a slight lead, but Crimson Storm in their first ever bowl game, first ever winning season as a Division II program. It has been an impressive start, and why not keep it with Porter? But he's unable to bounce it outside, just a gain of one on first down. Yeah, trying to get the ball out of the shadow of their own end zone. And under three minutes remaining, clock continues to run here at the end of the first half. And you wonder what Coach Hayda is going to elect to do in this situation. Obviously, they want to come away with points. They'd love to tie this before halftime. But I think at the very least, they want to make sure that the Hornets don't find any points. Yeah. Yeah, important to try to pick up the first down here, and then that'll pretty much run out the clock here, at, you know, going into halftime. I mean, when you're on your own five-yard line, you're not necessarily thinking 95-yard drive with two and a half minutes to play. But with Gage Porter's quarterback. Maybe Emporia State. <laughs> we saw what he did last time. Porter with the keeper. Well, maybe a gain of one before the wall of black and gold comes in. Emporia State taking timeout. their first timeout of the half. 2.07 remaining. First charge timeout of the half. Yeah, I think Garen Higgins picking up right there that uh, we can we can get a short field here. Let's take advantage, call a timeout. They need to stop right here, of course. Please set the game clock for two minutes and 10 seconds. Go ahead, Kit, set that game clock for us. I believe that is one of my responsibilities. There you go. Asking you shall receive, my friend. Again, very glad to have you with us here. The Fun Sound RV Heritage Bowl alongside Jeff Bauer and Kip McConaughey, beautiful Corsicana, Texas. Big thanks to Fun Sound RV as well as Corsicana Visitors Bureau, Community National Bank and Trust of Texas, College Street Bakery, Schulman's MBG All in One Family Fun, and Chick fil A, all of our great sponsors. And make sure you stick with us for halftime. We've got special treats for you. You were up there in Corsicana. You were checking out some of the festivities as some local community events, a banquet Thursday evening, high five Friday. Both of these teams making their way to some local schools to greet some very impressed young student athletes who hope one day to be in this position. Yeah, it was uh, awesome, to be honest. Main Street is so beautiful right around there in the Corsicana area. We're going to hear from the coaches. We're going to hear some singing going on with karaoke. And you're going to love the little high five segment. That's a, that's a lot of fun. One question. Are you involved in the singing? Uh, no, but okay. you know I love to sing. <laughs> I, I, I am the karaoke king. You are indeed. No <laughs> argument here. I leave that to you. They wouldn't give me the microphone, though, darn it. <laughs> Called out a mistake on their part. They just didn't know what talent they had in their midst. <laughs> Third and seven. Porter 
Able to get away from one. Porter stumbles. He's got the first down. Porter across the 20 and out of bounds. Houdini should be his nickname. I don't know how Gage Porter does it. And now you're thinking, why not? Let's keep this drive going. I mean, they were in the shadow of their own end zone. You're thinking he's going to get tackled. They're going to have to punt. And there he is again, like you said, the magic man. Fourth and two in the first quarter, touchdown. Fourth and 11 here in the second, took it 44 yards for the touchdown. Third and seven from his own six yard line. Comes up with a first down, Gage Porter. And you know all the focus is on him. I mean, they know what's coming, but still not been able to stop him. The clock continues to tick down, just over 90 seconds remaining in the half. And upended there quickly, nowhere to go was Aaron Fellows. And on the tackle, Chris Pope, the senior from Edmond, Oklahoma. You know the thing about Gage Porter also, not really a senior. I mean, he's already graduated. So he's he's just he's kind of an older player, kind of knows what to do with this offense. I think he has just kind of grown this season particularly uh, under the offense and does a great job. I mean, how often do you hear of a quarterback? I mean, he has a chance of eclipsing 2,000 yards rushing in, what, 11, 12 games? I mean, that's incredible. As a quarterback. And again, he leads the nation with 25 rushing touchdowns. That's not amongst quarterbacks. That's amongst all players. Yeah. Yeah, he averages over seven yards per carry. You see why. And he's just one of those players. He just doesn't go down on that first, first initial contact. And, you know, he's stronger than he appears. It's all about those legs, that leg drive. Well, he certainly has the size and the strength, 5'11", 225 pounds. And he has never missed a leg day in the weight room. That much I can guarantee you. <laughs> 129 remaining. It'll be second and nine for the Crimson Storm from their own 26. Emporia State with one timeout remaining. Still the full complement for Southern Nazarene. You see to see what they elect to do here, though. Yeah, you know, with the uh, the lightning bolt on the the helmet, they they have a similar style as Air Force. I mean, there's some uh, connections here and. Porter, he's going to be hit from behind and he'll fall forward for a very slight gain. His clock continues to tick down third and they'll say long eight now. Yeah, interesting to see what Dustin Hayda will do here. I, I feel like timeout. in this situation, so wait, there's a timeout. There you go. There's your answer. That's third final timeout of the half. Well, that's actually Emporia State calling the timeout. Okay. Their third and final timeout. And I wonder what Coach Hayda would do if he would take one, but instead it's Coach Higgins at Emporia State who uses his final timeout. They want another chance. They know what their offense can do. They want another crack at it. You have to like the, the mindset of we want the ball back. I mean, that's what they do, right? I mean, they average 40 points a game. Why not? We've seen what they can do. Speaking of what one man can do, take a look at some of the highlights thus far we still have a second half to play from Porter he's just been all over the field we mentioned two touchdowns has 225 yards rushing on 15 attempts that is over 14 yards a carry along a 59 we saw in that first quarter but 225 yards on 15 rushes. Yeah, a couple of touchdowns on fourth down, and he's just been impressive. There's one of them right there. Kind of got that, uh, he's got that ability to just see downfield. I mean, he, he has great vision. Watch this play right here. Somehow splits the defender. This was and takes it in and 11 yeah, from the 44. And, 11. and he took it to the house. In all of this, you see that tape on his right ring finger. He missed a drive. He was out. And you see some blood there just on the hip. I wonder if that has come from that ring finger. 220 yards, two touchdowns on 15 rushes. Porter takes to the air, incomplete. Bring up fourth down, and it appears that the Hornets will indeed get another opportunity here at the end of this first half. So. Coach Higgins wisely using those timeouts. You can't take them with you. Yeah, a little surprised, actually, the play call there, throwing the ball. Um, it, you know, I feel like uh, run it there, let that clock wind down, and go into halftime. You're down by seven. But now 
Emporia State's thinking they can get themselves maybe a short field and a touchdown here, maybe a field goal. I agree with you, considering the success that Porter's had on third down, even fourth down, rushing the ball. This will be a short punt, does take a Crimson Storm bounce and fielded at the 40. And Hornets fortunate that they were able to hold on to that one, took a shot to Trendon Collins, maybe not what they want the freshman big return big man big to do in that situation. Yeah, big hit right here. Probably won't be picking up that ball again. <laughs> yeah, coming in is Clarence Underwood Jr., the sophomore from Fletcher, Oklahoma, there lowering the boom. So plenty of time here for Emporia State with 105. I feel like this is what they do. I mean, they spread out the field. You can see the two at the top. In a short field, just 57 yards to go. They're not thinking field goal, I promise you. They are not. I'm with you there. Wasted. Flushed out of the pocket, has a man, but incomplete. Another drop that time. It was Collins, the return man, who couldn't come up with it. We've seen a few of those. One from Common, now Collins unable to hold on. It's the left-handed quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the go-to, right, for the receivers. Uh, well, it came out differently. My grandfather said that he was not allowed to play quarterback because he was left-handed, but that was that was a long time ago. Things are different as Common makes the reception and down inside the 40. They're going to mark him just inside the 39. Yeah, good pickup right here. Good pocket presence. Nice delivery. Again, taking to the air. Schultz complete inside the five, down to the two. The freshman wide out with a big grab, and it's going to be first and goal. And they quickly run up to the field here again. I mentioned they need very little time, and with 65 seconds when they got the ball back, they're not going to need much of that as Ross hit in the backfield for a loss. Coming in to make the tackle, Brock Carter down Brock, down the sophomore out of Louisville, Texas. Second down Second down. Yeah, good stop right there. Clock is moving, by the way. Warrior State, no timeouts remaining. Gleason looking, flushed out. Gleason has a man wide open. Coverage broke down, and he was just able to flip that one into the hands of Tommy Zimmerman. A redshirt junior from Oakland Park, Kansas, with his first touchdown of the ball game. What a huge touchdown. Big drive right there. 57 yards capped off by this nice little touch pass, if you will. And again, you, you, you know, we've talked a lot about Gage Porter, but Braden Gleason just kind of quietly doing his thing over there with, you know, 31 first half points. Point after attempt. Up and good by Kate Dodson with six seconds remaining in the half. Zimmerman with his first touchdown of the ball game. And it's 31-17 Emporia State. What a difference. It looked like Southern Nazarene was going to have a chance to run out the clock. They went for a pass attempt on third down, ultimately had to punt it away. And with 65 seconds remaining, that was more than enough time for the Hornets of Emporia State. Right, and Braden Gleason, you know, think about it. He's from Overland Park, just outside of Kansas City. I mean, probably a big Chiefs fan. That, that looked like the type of play that Kansas City would run right there. Just wait for your man to get open and uh, just dump it off. And, and not to mention, there was only seven seconds left uh, on the clock when he threw it, so. That looks very well reminiscent done. to something you would see at Arrowhead. Yeah. Yeah, no question about that. And obviously, um, Patrick Mahomes, the Chiefs quarterback, a native of Texas. He's from White House, just White outside House, of Texas. Tyler, not Correct. too far away from Dallas. Yeah, East Texas. Eight seconds remaining. And Southern Nazarene, again, find themselves trailing now 31 to 17. They much would have preferred it be 24 to 17 going into the half. I produced the Earl Campbell Tyler Rose Award Show, and in one year in particular, the finalists were Baker Mayfield, D.D. Westbrook, and of course, the aforementioned quarterback from the Kansas City Chiefs, and none of them won. Deontay Foreman won <laughs> from the University of Texas. We play a little football in the Lone Star State. We're having some great football here today for you as Southern Nazarene will go ahead and stop the clock with they're going to say, I believe, five seconds, and there it is, five seconds remaining in the half. So Porter and the Crimson Storm maybe one final opportunity 
before halftime. Yeah, down 31-17. I think you take this one into the locker room, but uh, it, it's been impressive what both quarterbacks have been able to do here in the first half. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what changes the coach make uh, at halftime. But uh, both teams, as advertised, doing pretty much what we thought they would do. You've got Southern Nazarene running the football with their quarterback, and, of course, the Hornets passing it with Braden Gleason. Porter five wide, but he who still will elect to run it as the first half comes to a close. Here in the front town, RV Heritage Bowl. It's Emporia State leading Southern Nazarene 31-17. Stick with us. Halftime here in Corsicana. What started as a small Texas bakery has blossomed into a global mail order business. Made daily from scratch, using only the finest ingredients, our baked goods are shipped to all 50 states and 196 foreign countries and are backed by a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Campers, Black Friday deals are happening now at Funtown RV. We're offering rock bottom prices on 2022 campers across all 13 Funtown RV locations. Don't miss travel trailers, fifth wheels, and toy haulers at prices so low you'll have to be in store to see. All 2022 campers must go. So get here early to shop Funtown RV's best selection of brands and floor plans first. Spend the holidays camping in a new Funtown RV and shop all our 2022 closeouts at FuntownRV.com. What does community mean to you? At Community National Bank and Trust of Texas, it means serving our neighbors. It means partnering with local businesses and organizations. It means exceptional service and a friendly face. It means growing to better serve our fellow Texans. That's my community. My community. My community. My community. My bank. Community National Bank and Trust of Texas. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Time. Welcome back to CN BT Stadium at Tiger Field here in Corsicana. Earlier this week, my partner Jeff Bauer had a chance to catch up with Heritage Bowl director Eric Bonner. Welcome to Corsicana, guys. Good. Well, the 2023 version of the Funtown RV Heritage Bowl brought to you by Community National Bank and Trust of Texas, as well as the Corsicana Visitors Bureau. We're excited about this year's event. You know, we've got Southern Nazarene from Bethany, Oklahoma. This is the first time they've ever played in the postseason, as well as Emporia State, which is also the first time we've had a team repeat in this game uh, from Emporia, Kansas. Man, we're just excited. The players have been here. They've had a great time interacting in the community. We had a wonderful banquet. Got lots of activities planned for them while they've been here. We're looking forward to a great game. Uh, so far, we've had a, a really great experience with these players and the teams and the coaches. We're just glad to have people out. Sunny Chamber of Commerce weather here in Corsicana. So we have the players engaged the entire time they're here. They show up on Thursday afternoon and then we treat them to a banquet um, at the Cook Center on the campus of Navarro College. Then Friday morning, they start off with High Five Friday. We disperse the players throughout the district in Corsicana ISD and they greet the, the students as they come into uh, school on Friday morning. Then they spend time at the Funtown location here in Corsicana, which is our presenting sponsor. Uh, after going to Funtown, then they go to Shulman's Movie Theater for a movie, uh, as well as some popcorn and uh, the games that they have available there. The Heritage Bowl was actually formed in 2019. It used to be the Corsicana Bowl in 2017, but the Heritage Bowl, which is a 501c3 established in 2019, 
2019. We did not have a game in 2020. Uh, so we've done this three or four years now. Our game this year, our special benefactors are Boys and Girls Club of Navarro County, as well as Special Olympics of Navarro County. So, you know, we're a nonprofit, so we try to push some of that money back into the community. You know, we, we try to do things. Everything is focused on supporting the community. It's about showcasing Corsicana and Navarro County. One of you guys to come in, see how, how quaint, cute our town is, and just come visit us, not just for the game, but anytime in the future. We were able to put on this event each year, and we've got a hardworking board of directors. It's a very small group that does the work of probably 30 or 40 people. You know, we've got uh, myself as the chairman of the board, Richie Cotrere, who is with Navarro College, is the vice chairman. Rusty Hitt, who is the CEO of Community National Bank and Trust, is one of our, our large sponsors sponsors are brought to you by a sponsor. The uh, secretary is Joshua Tackett, who is a district clerk for Navarro County. Raymond Lennox, member at large with Corsicana ISD. Clint Roddy, the athletic director for Corsicana ISD. And Amy Tidwell, who is the director of Main Street Corsicana. This group just does a lion's share of work, making sure this event goes off flawlessly. Each person brings a special gift to it when we allow people to do things that they're good at. And it just all comes together. It's a, it's a great team. You know, we've had great success success with our sponsors. We continue to expand that. This year we were able to add Riot Platforms, Corsicana Mattress, uh, Taco Bueno. You know, we're always looking for people that are interested in investing in a community, making this a great community event, showcasing Corsicana and Navarro County. We're just proud of all the work that we've done. Happy to have all of our sponsors from Funtown as a presenting sponsor to Community National Bank and Trust and the Corsicana Visitors Bureau as brought to you by sponsors and everybody all the way down to our timeout sponsors like MacDad and uh, Jerry's Paint and Body. So we're just happy about having full commitment from the community. We're always looking for others who'd like to be a part of this adventure, but we're just glad to, to be able to shepherd this thing through and put on a great product. Big thanks to Heritage Bowl director Eric Bonner taking the time to catch up with my broadcast partner Jeff Power earlier this week. Halftime here in Corsicana. Hornets lead to the Crimson Storm 31 to 17. Did you know that one in five women are sexually assaulted in college? That one in 16 men are sexually assaulted as well. That only 13% of rape survivors report assault. That eight in 10 victims know their attacker. In the Great American Conference, there are over 50,000 students with over 4,100 student athletes. In the Great American Conference, it's on us to stop sexual assault. Anyone can be a victim. Everyone can be a part of the solution. It's on me. To give a voice to the voiceless. It's on us. To give hope to the hopeless. It's on me. To take a stand. It's on us. To, to make, make a difference on our campuses. It's on you. To take the pledge. It's on us. Twelve schools. Two states. One conference. It's, it's on us. us. Halftime here at the Funtown RV Heritage Bowl in Corsicana, Texas. Glad to have you with us. Emporia State leading Southern Nazarene 31-17. Emporia State, the only two-time 
appear here in the bowl game. They were here back in 2018. They won it. They're hoping to go 2-0, but a lot of football remains. And I think the Crimson Storm of Southern Nazarene will have something to say about that. Alongside Jeff Power, I'm Kit McConico. Jeff, earlier this week, you had a chance to catch up with both of these head coaches, and it was a busy week for them. They came in on Thursday. A lot of local community events, a banquet on Thursday night. You saw some of the High Five Friday at the local schools. Here's what the coaches had to say to you about this bowl game and what it means to be a part of it in this community. We utilized those days early before Thanksgiving, and then when we got back, we got right to work um, on this game plan. So it was good. It was it was a great evaluation for our younger guys and just a few more days for them to get work. So that was great. They've enjoyed every, every bit of it, and uh, I know that they're also looking forward to, to playing the game. We're sure appreciative of the invite to come and, and we were anxious to accept it. And since we've been here, the guys have, it's been great. We had a great welcome banquet and that, that was an excellent experience for our guys. Got to have some fun, a good meal. The Cook Center that we were at was an amazing facility and the guys really enjoyed that in the planetarium. Elementary schools this morning, what a great opportunity that was for our guys to get out and uh, infuse some energy into those kids and, and get their Friday started out great. So it's been a really fulfilling experience so far our guys have have enjoyed every second of it it's been first class since we've gotten here uh, we had a great banquet Michael Montgomery was the guest speaker and he did an excellent job his message was was right on point I did high five Friday uh, to, to the schools here the elementary schools and even the middle school and high school and our guys uh, they had a great time doing that we've been to a lot of bowl games and it's the first time we've ever been able to do the movie Again, big thanks to the entire Heritage Bowl staff and committee, especially Director Eric Bonner and his entire team putting on all the festivities this week, all the local community events. Jeff, you were up there in Corsicana enjoying yourself with the teams. I know they've had a great time thus far, but this is what it all comes down to. I mean, what is happening on the field? That being said, um, they got into a... I would say a, a not a dance contest, but a little singing contest that you were uh, a, a part of, if I'm not mistaken here. Well, I tell you what, uh, Garen Higgins can sing, okay? He's the Emporia <laughs> State head coach. Dustin hate it too, I'm sure. But uh, both those guys, it was awesome talking to them. But just listen in. YMCA, we all know it, but listen to the whole, all the full teams having fun here, having a good time. Totally into it. You gotta love it. And not a contest, a sing along, but you've gotta love it. Both these head coaches are having a ball. You're talking about leading by example. Yeah, and, and no doubt, you, you like to see that. And uh, you know, it's about bonding. I mean, a chance to get together. Uh, your, your, your team has a, a chance to just spend some time away on a trip. It's fun. Bowl games are a lot of fun for these college athletes. Well, they're a ton of fun. And obviously, you get the extra practices. But a victory in a bowl game propels you into the next season. It gives you that momentum. Both these coaches fully aware of that and what this could do for their programs going forward. And we might get some younger players in this game in the second half. Who knows? But the way things kind of shook out is they'll have great memories for the rest of their life about the experience here at the Heritage Bowl. They will indeed. An entire second half of football coming up between the Hornets and the Crimson Storm. Emporia State, a touchdown with six seconds remaining in the half, extends their lead 31 to 17 with the second half coming up.
Halftime here in Corsicana, seeing the BT Stadium at Tiger Field, the Fun Town RV Heritage Bowl, Emporia State 8-3 on the season, looking to move to 9-3 as they have a 31-17 lead over Southern Nazarene University at halftime. Take a look at some of our first half highlights, and for the Crimson Storm, it was all about the star quarterback, Gage Porter. Yeah, 225 yards rushing, couple of touchdowns on fourth down, I might add. And that was just on 16 carries. He was really electric for them in the first half. Of course, he did have the injury to his finger, uh, happened to that ring finger on his throwing hand right there. And that kind of was part of the story here in the first half and why the momentum left them and why Braden Gleason was able to get things going on the other end, 195 yards passing, couple touchdowns, three in fact through the air. Gleason, 18 of 23, three touchdowns, a 78% completion percentage, a QBR of 192 in the first half. Yeah, both these quarterbacks have lived up to the billing in this one, and you see the big run right here. Uh, that was a fourth down and 11, if you can believe that. And a nice job of uh, running for Gage Porter right there. But look at these stats. That's impressive. I mean, a lot of offense, but just different ways of getting it done. Different ways indeed. Just the 13 pass yards for Southern Nazarene on just two completions. They're getting it done on the ground. This is what we expected coming into this game. It was going to be the pass versus the run. So far, Emporia State with that two-score lead. But that touchdown with six seconds remaining at the end of the first half, that is a huge boost for the Hornets. Yeah, Emporia State calling those timeouts, getting the ball back, short field again. They've been able to take advantage of that. Uh, Southern Nazarene, they have the three out of nine on third downs, which tells me not quite where they want to be as far as the possession of the football and controlling the clock and no doubt that's been a factor is they haven't been able to sustain long drives despite the fact they've had some great runs from their quarterback yeah right you are second half when we return hornets and the crimson storm from the fun sound rv heritage bowl
character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days, I like to talk about refining character. I think that uh, we're all in process. and. In those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. Start of the third quarter, just moments away here at the Fun Sound RV Heritage Bowl in Corsicana. Thanks to all of our sponsors, including the Corsicana Convention and Visitors Bureau, Emporia State leading Southern Nazarene 31 to 17 as we get the second half underway. Braden Gleason, senior quarterback, leading the way, played in his final game for the Hornets. Three touchdowns, 195 yards through the air. He has missed just five times in 23 attempts. For the man who leads the country in completion percentage, 74%, he is over 78% thus far. I like how he rolls out of the pocket and makes things happen, buys some time for his receivers who are, as you can see, picking up great yardage after the catch. And then this one right here was just a key play right at the end of the first half as he finds a way to run it in for the touchdown. Yeah, I don't need the block. I'm good. <laughs> he can do it all. Mention the passing, but has the legs as well, does Gleason. A little flip over at the end there to Zimmerman for that final touchdown to extend the lead to two scores, which is six seconds remaining in the first half. The Oklahoma native asked him, being from Oklahoma, did he know anyone on the Southern Nazarene team? He said he's a little older now, so most of the guys on this team, maybe younger, he didn't play with, but obviously the connections in this part of the country, so many of these young men play with and against each other at the high school level and now at the college level as well. Yeah. And I mean, he's a great team leader. Both these quarterbacks are definitely well-respected amongst the players. And one thing you'll find in Division II, a lot of the players are older. They are kind of finishing out their careers, may not play football again after this, so they're enjoying the moment. They certainly are. At least in the leading, wants to finish his Hornets career on a high note. His team certainly doing their part in that first half, but this one far from written in stone we've got a lot of football remaining here in the second half but for southern nazarene a team that had a bit of momentum and then gave up that score late in the first half to go down and buy two scores how do they bounce back and i think it's gonna be critical for them to find points early here in this third quarter because we've seen what the hornets offense can do they can score from anywhere quick strike offense if they extend this lead another score or two that may be it yeah and i like the fact that you know southern nazarene scored 41 in their second to last game against arkansas monticello and then scored 49 against oklahoma baptist so you know, you think of this team as a running oriented team, but they can put up some points uh, all season long. Uh, they've they've improved and uh, here they are finding themselves in a game where it's it's winnable right now going into the second half, but they're going to need a few stops on defense and then continue to run the ball and maybe even spread it out a little bit and get some of the receivers involved. That's a great point. Hornets will receive the kickoff to start the second half. Won the last three, has Emporia State. Their last loss came on October the 21st at Central Missouri. Southern Nazarene winners of the last two, but neither team has played a ball game in three weeks. And hit as the returner crossed the 30. That is where Emporia State will start things off as Gleason and the black and gold offense back out on the field. See it right there, 18 of 23, 195 yards, three touchdowns through the air and one on the ground. You know, in those last three victories uh, for Emporia State going into this bowl game, uh, they scored 39, 63, and 45. So again, they're an offensive powerhouse. I like the fact that they like to run some tempo. We'll see if they continue doing that here in the second half. Gleason, empty backfield, takes to the air, complete and immediately wrapped up quickly there. Kenyatta Richardson, the junior linebacker from Mansfield, Texas on the tackle. You know, the 63, they beat Missouri Southern 63-28 and then had a really tough game with Fort Hayes State, but found a way to win it, 45-42, taking that momentum into the bowl season. Second and six from the 36. They will keep it on the ground nowhere. 
for the running back to go. Again, a steady dose of Billy Ross Jr. in the first half. Tackle made by Emmanuel Obina. Sophomore out of Georgetown, Texas, just north of Austin. More tempo. Gleason wasting no time. He's going to tuck it to run, able to get by Abina, and he spins forward for the first down. Third and six. He picked up seven. Yeah, that's all Gleason right there. Not too much, not too many lanes open, but he found a way to pick up the yardage necessary for the first down, and they're quickly back up to the line. The up tempo, posing problems for the Crimson Storm. Ross, the man in motion. An empty backfield underneath and just too low. He was trying to locate Trendon Collins. Yeah, definitely a catchable ball right there. Gleason just immediately turned around and firing. Just a quick pass play there. Got to make that connection. Well, second and ten is Ross back in the backfield. Collins, freshman receiver, on top. So Nazarene just rushing three. Now coming in, and that one caught by Ross. He's going to pick up a yard, maybe two. Yeah, nice one-handed grab right there. Picks up about three or four, but not nearly enough for the first down, but look at that catch. He's a player. I'll say gain of two is... Brings up third and eight from the 45. He certainly is in great hands, particularly for a running back, which we've seen on display on more than one occasion. There's the five wide we've been looking for. Crimson Storm looking for a stop. See if they can force a punt. Instead, it'll be Ross underneath, and he scampers free. He has enough for the first down. Yeah, just getting Ross open in space. Get him the football and let him do his thing. Made a couple of moves on some linebackers and picked up the first down. Ross, such an impressive player. We talk about common in the wide receivers, but Ross having himself a game. And just as I say that, great penetration from Nick Blanchard, the junior from San Diego, hits him in the backfield for a loss. Yeah, great tackle right there from Blanchard. He's the defensive end and coming all the way across to make that tackle. Nicely done. Second and 11 now after penetration from Blanchard. A timeout taken. 12.43 remaining in the third. Hornets with a man down on the field. And we'll step away for a second. Emporia State leading and driving their first possession of the second half. Looking for something to do? Downtown Corsicana is full of things to explore for you and the family. Have some fun with us by attending one of our many downtown events. Our downtown is full of 33 shopping destinations and 19 eateries. For live performances, swing by the Palace Theater, Warehouse of the Living Arts, or Corsicana Opry. Then take a selfie in our colorful art alley. So come and visit us in downtown Corsicana, where the history is rich and the future is bright. This is where initiative leads to innovation. where character spurs personal growth. Where young tigers become tomorrow's leaders. Corsicana ISD, every tiger, every day. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating nine years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. Campers, Black Friday deals are happening now at Funtown RV. We're offering rock bottom prices on 2022 campers across all 13 Funtown RV locations. Don't miss travel trailers, fifth wheels, and toy haulers at prices so low you'll have to be in store to see. All 2022 campers must go. So get here early to shop Funtown RV's best selection of brands and floor plans first. Spend the holidays camping in a new Funtown RV and shop all our 2022 closeouts at FuntownRV.com.
Hornet star senior running back Billy Ross Jr. being attended to the Oklahoma City native. Taking a look at his left ankle. We'll take a look at the play as he had to be helped off the field. It looks like he kind of turned, maybe twisted his ankle there, the left ankle, taping it up. He was able to limp off, but had some assistance in the process. Ross, 10 rushes for 47 yards. But he's been a factor. And they will keep it on the ground, even with Ross on the sideline and coming forward that time. Kingsley Bennett, the sophomore, a little bit of thunder and lightning. Ross the size, Bennett with the speed. He picks up the first down to the 33. I like that little end around play. They've run it a few times in the game with Kingsley. Gleason dropping back, has a man wide open in the middle. That's complete. Washington inside the 10, and it's going to be first and goal. Washington wasting no time. Yeah, Kobe Washington wide open in the middle of the field. A big gain all the way down to the seven yard line. Gleason, Kingsley, the man in motion, has a man wide open. It's touchdown, Hornets. Trenton Collins. Yeah, breakdown in coverage right there. Collins was wide open the back part of the end zone, and nice job by Braden Gleason to pick that up and make a perfect strike. Collins, his sixth receiving touchdown of the season. You said left wide open, and he made no mistake as Emporia State extends their lead. Still the PAT to come. But that hurry-up offense proving problematic for the Crimson Storm of Southern Nazarene as the PAT up and good with 11.38 remaining in the third. It's Hornets 38, Crimson Storm 17. Loaded to the left, wide open. Nobody back to make the defensive play there. Perfectly thrown. That's how you get it. That's how you draw it up. Jeff, what a huge turn. Again, Emporia State scoring with six seconds remaining in the first half. They extend the lead to two scores. They take their first possession of the second. Find Painter yet again as they're now up by three scores. And that's big with Billy Ross being injured and out of the sidelines. No word if he'll be able to come back. It's early in the second half. You want to be able to keep that confidence going for your offense and they're able to do that pick up the first score of the third quarter so many games are won and lost right before halftime and right coming out of halftime and Emporia State doing a nice job of taking advantage of the opportunity still looking there at the left ankle of Billy Ross Jr. Coaches say it. it's a cliche, but they say it for a reason. You want to finish the half well, you want to start a half well. So important to have that momentum going into the locker rooms and coming out. That's exactly what Emporia State has been able to do here. Now we'll see if Southern Nazarene is able to respond. Porter, he has been the offense. Just two completions thus far. They may have to open things up a little bit, the Crimson Storm, if they're going to find a way back into this one. So the ball come out to the 25-yard line. Wise choice, probably not bringing that one out. And Braxton Bird there, the Amarillo product out of Canyon Randall High School. And he, he thought for a second about bringing it up, but he made the wise decision. Yeah, he took a couple steps and then, oh, yes, by the way, I, I, I'm calling for this one. <laughs> a fair catch. A beautiful day here in Corsicana. The sun is out. Very glad to have you with us, wherever you may be joining us from. It's one of four Division II bowl games. Both these teams thrilled to be playing an extra ball game in the postseason, hoping for a bit of momentum to propel them into 2024. Cage Porter back out. Porter, first and 10 from his own 25. Strung out very well, doing a great job there, not allowing Porter to find any room was Bo Odom, the redshirt junior out of Ada, Oklahoma. I know, he's, I know he's heard the references before, but he looks like Tim Tebow out there. He just kind of takes control and uh, using that stiff arm. Got to be careful with that, though. That got him in trouble earlier. Still a gain of four. That is a win the way he's been running the ball. Still see a little bit of tape on that ring finger on his throwing hand. Ball lined up here on the, on the 29. This is a big series right here for SNU. If they want to stay in this game, they need a good sustained drive here. 
really do. Porter, a little trickeration. Crimson Storm are going to throw, and this one just thrown away. So third and six. Now the pressure is starting to mount. That's I'm Cepeda, the man who is looking for a man downfield. We touched on that earlier. The threat of the pass may not come from Gage Porter. You may have to pitch it out and throw it from some other direction because of that injury. Incomplete pass. Third down. But no foul on the play, simply an incomplete pass, says our referee. And Jeff, to your point, the one he made earlier, it may not come from Porter, but somebody's going to have to throw the ball, you would imagine, for Southern Nazarene. And I think Emporia State did a great job of picking up on that play right there. I, I think they probably talked about that at halftime. Look for these types of plays coming out of the backfield. And this one blown dead. False start. On the offense, number 15, five yard So the Nazarene not helping themselves. Joe Flores, the sophomore wide receiver from Albuquerque with the false start, turns it into third and 11 now. Well, no question. That's definitely a, a Gage Porter play coming up. The, their, their biggest threat is him dropping back the pass and running out of the formation because he has more space and in some cases might be going up against a defensive back once he gets past the front line. Porter trying to convert on third down. It's been an issue, takes to the air, oh. and he's got a man complete across the 50, the 40, inside the 30, down to the 25. Colby Branch, the junior from Fairfield, just about 30 miles away, back in his home neck of the woods. The former Fairfield Eagle comes up with a huge third down conversion. Well thrown ball, great catch on the run there by Colby Branch. Perfectly placed. And Branch coming down with it and picking up some really good yardage all the way to the 24. This is essentially a home game for Branch. Fairfield just down the road, and he shows up big. First time the ball is found him. Porter. Takes off running inside the 20, inside the five, and he's going to bounce it in for a touchdown. Porter with the third down conversion with the arm, and he takes it to the house with the legs. Great response from the Crimson Storm. Just when you thought they were knocked out, two big plays in a row by the Crimson Storm, capped off by their main man, Gage Porter, as he fights his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Order that stat line just continues to Result grow. Of the play. It's a touchdown. There is no foul. Porter now four Extra. rushing touchdowns. And what a performance from the graduate student. Important extra point here, trying to make it a two score, two touchdown game here. And it's good. Right down Main Street, so it's 10-04 remaining in the third. A huge touchdown run from Porter. The Crimson Storm cut it to 14. They trail 38 to 24 here in the Fun Town RV Heritage Bowl. What does community mean to you? At Community National Bank and Trust of Texas, it means serving our neighbors. It means partnering with local businesses and organizations. It means exceptional service and a friendly face. It means growing to better serve our fellow Texans. That's my community. My community. My community. My community. Money! Community National Bank and Trust of Texas. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Hi, my name is Katrina, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A nugget trays is that they're a mouthful of awesome. That first bite gives you that full flavor. During the holidays, Chick-fil-A catering can help with bringing my family together, and that makes your heart sing. Hey, this is Brian, and the little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A nugget trays is the joy that it brings to me and everybody around me during the holidays. They're warm, juicy, and delicious. When you walk in the room, everybody just starts smiling. Art, culture, and entertainment thrive in Corsicana, Texas. From community events, museums, festivals, and more, there's always something to do and new to discover. Our Parks Department keeps recreational spaces clean and accessible. The Richland Chambers Reservoir is a stunning 44,000-acre lake used for fishing, boating, and relaxation. Corsicana is also home to the Cook Center Planetarium, which offers many educational programs. 
Both the Warehouse Living Arts Center and the Pierce Museum at Navarra College feature collections covering a wide range of historical events and interest. The Downtown Arts District is a must-see home to the historic Palace Theater that presents world-class entertainment. For time with the family, join us for community events in the historic Downtown District. Derrick Days, the Great Pumpkin Patch, and the Freedom Festival are some of our favorites. In Corsicana, the adventure and fun never end. Gage Porter doing everything he can to keep Southern Nazarene in this one now. Three touchdowns all on the ground, 251 yards rushing on 18 attempts. Impressive. A four-place, 75-yard drive. A lot of that coming on the arm and legs, if you will, uh, from Porter. And he, he did a great job there of just capping it off with that touchdown run. You could tell. Uh, he's back. You know, the will to win is inside. That third down conversion pass to Branch, that was just his first completion of the ball game. And here come the Hornets the other way. Big return almost all the way up to midfield. Jax Pets, the red shirt senior. The linebacker takes this one, shows off the shifty moves. Who's having a flashback to his high school days. They've had great field position throughout this game. That's been one of the storylines. Emporia State has had a shorter field over and over and over to get their points, whereas SNU has had to go the length of the field a few times here. The one next to Kansas product takes it up to the 48, where Gleason will start first and 10. As you said, another short field. Gleason underneath, wide open, has Common. And Common up across the 30, a gain of... 22. Southern Nazarene had two players in the area, but Common just finding a way to find that seam. Those good receivers, they know how to get to that spot to get open. Emporia State looking to rescore that, restore that three score lead, I should say. A handoff with Billy Ross Jr. still on the bench. That two headed monster of running backs, Kingsley Bennett, that time with the carry. Number 30, DeAndre Thomas on the carry. Oh, excuse me, rather, that was DeAndre Thomas, the junior, getting the carry. Yeah, good for Thomas, getting a chance to get in and get some playing time. Underneath, will be a short gain as Tommy Zimmerman upended after a gain of four. And there is the aforementioned Billy Ross Jr. still being attended to. We'll see if he can make his way back out. What a loss that is for the Hornets. He looks like he's ready to come back in. Swinging his legs over the table. He wanted the all clear. Grab his helmet and go. Third and six from the 27. Another dropped pass. As good as the Hornets have been, drop passes have been an issue at times. You know, I thought we were going to see holding on that particular play on Emporia State. No call there. And that, that which reminds me, there hasn't been very many yellow flags in this game at all. It's very, very clean. clean. But, yeah, I got to find a way to come down with that. That might have been the sun in the eyes right there. That looked like uh, he might have lost it there for a second. That's a very good point. Hornets not used to sun. They've been dealing with snow and rain the last few <laughs> weeks up there in Emporia. They had snow after Thanksgiving. Rain before as the wheel route wide open and upended inside the five was DeAndre Thomas. It's going to be first and goal from the two. Great play. Thomas making the catch. Almost got into the end zone. Nice effort. Comes out of the backfield there. The wheel route, as you mentioned. And he's wide open. You got to pick him up if you're the defense. Junior Clipped out of bounds. Blue Springs, Missouri native. And it was just about there. Southern Nazarene, the man down. That is big Cameron Flowers. Flowers, a senior out of Saxe, Texas. Another DFW Metroplex product. You know, if you can recruit the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you're going to have a good football team because there's a lot of players in that area that are I mean, arguably some of the best in the state of Texas in the DFW area. And the, and the championship quality teams that come from that area are proven year after year. You're absolutely right. Right in the getting to the latter stages of the Texas high school football playoffs, big games. Last night, some of those teams, those Dallas schools, Duncanville, obviously they're the cream of the crop when it comes to 6A, the highest classification in Texas high school football. They're still alive and 
Yeah, they're playing Spring Westfield over in the Austin area, and there's a lot of huge games, as you mentioned. That we, you get to this point, and it's every Saturday game, football. Every <laughs> game is a big game at this it's no point. No more Friday night lights. It's now Saturday afternoons. <laughs> You're right about that one. But so, Thomas, picture perfect weather in Texas. Why not right now? It's about 60 degrees and sunny. First and goal from the two. Thomas stays in. Instead, they will take to the air, and it's caught. Touchdown to Hornets, Tyler Comet with his first, his 19th of the season. He's a playmaker, isn't he? He just goes up, makes the plays, makes the catches. Little Fred Belitnikoff right there with the stick on his fingers to bring that one down. That was nice. Comet's 19 touchdowns lead the country. You said it. He is as good as they get. He doesn't drop passes. I mean, he is just all over it. First in the touchdown catches, fourth in receptions, first team all conference. And the PAT up and good with 8.05 yeah. remaining in the third. Emporia State marches down the short field and scores again. Tyler Common on the reception. His right hand was being held as he crossed through the back part of the end zone. Still managed to get up there and make that catch. And Jeff, just when it looks like the Crimson Storm have a little momentum, they're able to score, get their self back into it. The Hornets march right back down the field and respond. That's what good teams do. Yeah, that was a killer right there if you're SNU, Emporia State. Again, short field. They're, they're continually putting together drives that are anywhere from, you know, 50, 55, 57. And that's maybe been the difference here. 52 yards, six plays. It took just a minute 45. Very quick strike offense. They like to run the tempo. It, it sort of it, it fits their style of play. You can tell uh, that's what they prefer as far as their uh, recruiting. They want those playmakers. And they're allowed to, you know, distribute the ball in space and put up a lot of points. SNU still a lot of time remaining. 8.05 here in the third. Southern Nazarene, they've dominated the time of possession, almost 2-1 to one in favor of the Crimson Storm. But we've got a team with a prolific offense that the Hornets have. It is difficult as this one. A little squib there fielded at the 45 and Able to get hands on at that time. It was Trey Dedman. So it'll be good field position here for the Crimson Storm. A short field. What can they do with it? Yeah, they haven't had too many short fields. And obviously want to answer that touchdown that Emporia State just scored. And that's the man to do it right there. Number 14. With the it offense. Gage Porter. It has been all on the ground, just one completion in five attempts for Porter. Conversely, 251 yards on 18 rushes and three touchdowns. A little different formation here, though. Now four out. Oh. Ball start. On the offense, number 77, the five-yard penalty remains first down. Jeff, you mentioned this has been a very cleanly played game, and it has not a lot of penalty flags. But the last two possessions, there's been a false start against the Crimson Storm, not doing themselves any favors. Yeah, I got a man in motion right there. One of the players just kind of jumped on the line of scrimmage. Might have been a hard count, trying to get the defense off sides. And sometimes it happens. When you're used to running and run blocking all the time, sometimes you get a little jumpy when there's a pass play call. <laughs> oh, it's it's much different. We mentioned this, and I think to a man, if you ask any offensive lineman, they will always prefer to run block. They want to be those road graders going forward. They don't want to have to sit back. But you're right. It's very different when you've got a pass block and get that protection, not something that that offensive line for the Crimson Storm all too accustomed to doing. Well, think about how many teams run the spread offense. Probably 90% of college football is out of a spread. I mean, very few teams run out of a run formation like Southern Nazarene. And hit in the backfield. First there for the Hornets was Jordan Williams, the redshirt senior out of St. Louis. 
Yeah. It's going to be a loss of one, bringing up second and 16. But if you're Emporia State, you know, you want to load the box up here. You want to get your big men up front. They've, they've done a nice job up front with their front four. Um, that's actually put Porter in a position where he's had to take off and run a time or two, which has actually worked to his advantage. But now they've got three down linemen. Porter bounces it back, trying to find some room, and he is corralled. The Cavalry coming in for the black and gold. Leading the way, Jerron Joseph, the star defensive back. And you kind of get the impression that Emporia State was uh, kind of getting tired of hearing about Gage and his running ability. Just wrap him up, you know, put a spy on him and then drop, you know, get a good pass rush on him if he decides to throw it. The Empire State product, that's what at halftime, maybe you, your defensive coordinator just reads the stat line for Porter to that defense, and that's enough to... Mm -hmm. It's enough to rally the troops as they gave up almost 250 yards of rushing to the Crimson Storm quarterback in the first half alone. You need to contain him in that pocket. That's the key. Third and long 19 from the 36. Porter will throw, and that is tipped away. Dropping back in coverage, able to get a fingertip to it was LeVon Jones. You might have seen one of the Southern Nazarene players on the bench saying, where's the flag, where's the flag? Well, that ball was tipped. So it was up. It was free game right there once it was tipped. Jones did a very good job. He knew the pass was coming. He was able to get back and got a fingertip to it, did number 36. Southern Nazarene will be forced to punt it away. Not many punts today. Not many indeed. They've gone for it by and large. Fourth and 19, and the pursuit comes in, unable to get there. Their pressure be fair caught at the 29 yard line. This is where the Hornets will begin with 618 remaining in the third, a 45 24 lead. I would expect to see the Emporia State offense to kind of slow things down now, maybe not be in so much of a hurry as far as running tempo. Uh, run the ball on the ground a little bit more on this particular drive. They've got a 45-24 lead. It's not totally secure yet, but you want to find a way to put together a nice drive, get a touchdown, and then maybe get some players off the bench to get some bowl experience for next year. Thomas will take the handoff, and he's wrapped up. He's going to be hit for a loss. Coming in, leading the way, big number 99, Austin Martin, the redshirt sophomore. And Southern Nazarene thinking the same thing right there. They're going to run it, but Emporia State says, you know what, let's stick with what we do best. <laughs> let's throw the football. Still no Billy Ross Jr. on the field. This common with the reception and takes the tackler with him up just shy of the 40. The common after a slow start by his illustrious standards, starting to pick things up. Bring up third and one. You know, you, you want to dance with who brung you, as the legendary Darrell Royal said here in the state of Texas, and this is what they do. I Col mean, they throw the football. Collins first down and in to Crimson Storm territory all the way down to the 35. It goes Trinden Collins, the freshman, with a big gain. Injury timeout. Injury timeout. An injury timeout. Clock stops 5.30 remaining in the third quarter. Talk about yards after catch. Collins making it happen. Yeah, well done. You know, when he catches the ball, look out. Because uh, he, he can definitely, he can run after he catches it. No doubt about it. Collins and his quarterback, Gleason, actually from the same hometown in Oklahoma, obviously did not play together. The difference in years. But some talent there as there is a Southern Nazarene player down on the field. Again, we take the opportunity to thank our hosts here in Corsicana. Big thanks to everyone involved in the Funtown RV Heritage Bowl. What a great week it has been. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors as well. Corsicana Visitors Bureau, Community National Bank and Trust of Texas, College Street Bakery, Shulman's MBG, All-in-One Family Fund, and Chick-fil-A. As David Mosingo, the junior from Crandall, Texas coming off. His coach there just checking on him was Dustin Hayda, fourth year in charge of this program. Gleason, pressure coming. Common couldn't get back to it. 
Yeah, that's the key. You've got to get pressure on the quarterback, and, and Gleason has been able to run out of the pocket and complete some balls downfield, but not this time. Good pressure coming from the outside. Job well done there by Southern Nazarene's number seven. As uh, That was the uh, defensive back right there making a stop, Emmanuel Obina. Bina. He's a linebacker, but close enough there. He looks like a defensive back. <laughs> Bina moves well. 225, the redshirt sophomore. Another Texan out of Georgetown. So third and 10 now from the 35. This drive stalling a bit. We'll see if Gleason and the Hornets able to convert and keep it alive. All at the Crimson Storm's 35-yard line. Thomas, the man, he's going to take to the air wide open. And he actually went inside and had a man wide open was Trinity Collins. Instead, he went to Common, who's going to draw the flag, pass interference on the defense. But look how wide open Collins is as his defender fell down. Yeah, I'm with you. I thought he was going to Collins. On the defense. But yeah, three. pass interference there. The previous spot, automatic first down. That ball may have been already thrown by the time that defender fell down and left. Trendon Collins all by his lonesome. Yeah, that's that's good pickup right there. That's exactly what happened. Common, such a talented wide receiver. The pass interference committed by Ethan Miner. First and 10 now from the 20 coming in. Able to get the flip off indeed into the pass. It's going to be a touchdown back to Gleason. Thought it was a busted play for sure, but no. It's a Hornets touchdown. The quarterback, Braden Gleason, on the reception. Looks like there might be a flag down. Let's see. A legal forward pitch, I'm sure. I think that's exactly what it is. That was something else, but you spotted it, my friend. Wait for the but officials to confer. It was a, it was a nice effort. <laughs> Wild looking play there. Would have been something. Gleason known for throwing touchdowns. I don't know if he's caught one. Illegal forward pass on the offense. That's a five yard period from the spot of the foul. Lost it down. Second down. Little street ball here. And Billy yeah, Ross. There it is right there. Junior, the star running back back in. But that was clearly an illegal forward pass. Good to see Ross Jr. back in though, nonetheless. Yeah, he's back out there on the field. There he is. It'll be second and a 21 from the 31. Over the top and just too tall for Collins. He fired that one in there, no doubt. That probably required a little bit more of a touch pass towards that pylon. But Emporia State moving the football, chewing up some clock in the way that they do it, which is throwing the football. But, in, you know, more importantly for them, moving the ball down the field. It's going to be another long third down. If Gleason is able to convert this, keep the drive alive. Firstly, Southern Nazarene, they need a stop. Trying to get back into this one. It starts here underneath, wide open. Has a man, but he's short of the first down is Zimmerman. Zimmerman taken down at the 15. You don't want to give Gleason too much time to throw, and that's what he's had uh, throughout this game. Not enough pressure from Southern Nazarene to, to take him out of, you know, put him in that uncomfortable range. But nonetheless, they do get a, they do force a field goal opportunity here. So Dodson will come on to attempt the field goal. Fourth and five from the 15. Dodson, 32 yard field goal attempt. No trouble, sends it through and extends the Hornets lead with 402 remaining in the third. Emporia State on top, 48 to 24. They'll take that, they chewed off a lot of time off the clock, they get the field goal so they get points. Ross was back on the field. That's a good sign for them. So. I mentioned Tyler Common leads the country, does the senior from Kansas. 19 touchdown receptions on the season, but he can do it in a myriad of ways, running, 
the yards after the catch, after a slow first half, he started to pick up, and that's exactly what Hornet fans expect. Yeah, he just finds a way to get open. He makes plays. He's a, he's a great receiver in the fact that he can catch pretty much anything thrown in his area. He does have some good moves once he catches the football. Uh, I like this play right here. Watch how he goes up high, makes the catch, brings it down. Nicely done. Common, 76 yards, eight receptions, and a touchdown for the all-conference honoree. Jeff, you said it. Good receivers. They just have a knack. They're able to find those soft spots, able to get open, and Common certainly can do it. Yeah, you think about, uh, you, you look at the NFL, you remember players like Wes Welker or Amendola, these guys that, you know, they're, they're not maybe large in stature, but they know where the, the area of the zone is where they can get open and, and exploit it. They were certainly able to do that. A lot of times we look at the measurables, and if you're not 6'4", and you run a 4'4", four four, you've got players that just know how to play the ball game, and I think sometimes the analytics focus on those maybe a bit too much as opposed to the proof we can see on film. If, if, they, if you can play, you can play. Yeah. Yeah, I like, you know, I feel like a lot of those players that they're just, you know, get their nose dirty and just get out there and, and play football. And, uh, you know, he strikes me as one of those kind of players. And I think the team in general from Emporia State, they're full of those type of playmakers. They know how to get open and uh, make something happen. And, you know, makes Braden Gleason look good as their quarterback. Aaron Higgins, 16th year in charge of his alma mater, a former Hornet quarterback himself, leading by example for his program. Porter back to work, trying to weave his way through, and he'll pick up just about fall. Let's we'll see, they're going to mark him a gain of four there on first down. Took a shot to the head, too, as he was going down. He's been roughed up a little bit out here today, but I'm sure he, he feels, you know, he... He'll, he'll remember this season. I mean, what a year for him. I mean, just no doubt about it. I mean, I made the comparison earlier to Tim Tebow, but he really reminds me of him, the way he runs, the way he he's so athletic, and uh, he just has that will to win. I, I wouldn't count him out just yet. You know what I mean? There's still time, but they need to score pretty quickly here. They do indeed. This is a crucial drive. Porter pitches it outside. It's going to be a first down and out of bounds up across the 40. We'll see where they mark him. It's going to be up to the 45 Stayed in. before finally knocked out of bounds was Donald May. Yeah, watch the effort right here. Nice little pitch, a little further than you probably want, but uh, nonetheless, it was effective. They get the first down and a few more. May able to tightrope that sideline. Yeah, Stayed in bounds. First and 10 at the 45. A crucial drive indeed for the Storm. Four wide, here we go. If they can go on a drive, take some time off the clock, some, give their defense a chance to catch their breath and come away with some points as well. Porter bounces it outside. And up to the 50, it'll be a gain of five. So used to seeing those 20, 30 yard runs from him in the first half. But if he's able to pick up four or five yards a clip, that's all you really need. Yeah, he's just, he's a very determined runner, knows where the first down marker is, and, you know, realizes that a second and five is a good offensive play call opportunity here. Maybe now they try to chunk it up downfield, see if they can catch Emporia State offside uh, or um, off guard. Remember, he had that big third down conversion to Colby Branch. Mm hmm. So he can certainly throw the ball. Averages over 150 yards passing per game. Also 10 touchdowns through the air. And they will indeed take to the air. A man downfield and it's bobbled. Incomplete. It was intended for Andrew Tisdale, but in on the coverage and able to break it up was Montreal Wilson. Montreal Wilson, great job right there. They get a lot of pressure up front. You see the pressure coming up. Way to get the hand on the ball there, Montrell. Nice job. Redshirt senior out of Oklahoma City. Millwood High School product doing a fantastic job. That ball it. was well thrown. That was, a, that was just a good defensive play. It was indeed. But he'd like to see the Crimson Storm maybe go to the air a bit more, particularly in those situations. They're going to have to. But I think right now it's a running situation out of the out of this pass and play formation. Third and five. Oh, new quarterback. It's again. the backup in Davis. 
Jarvis Davis, who we saw in in the first half, he was there in the first quarter after Gage Porter took that shot to his finger. A lot of pressure in on Davis. Fourth and five, Davis will remain. You want to be a college football quarterback. Did you see that shot to the head right there? So 48-24, and it looks like Davis is now, is he coming out? He is, but not replaced by Gage. Oh, there's Gage, all right. So coming out there was Cepeda. Gage Porter remains in, and he will drop back to throw. Fourth and five, has a man, it's complete first down, and the drive continues. Able to find Andrew Tisdale, the senior from Humble, Texas. His first reception of the ball game. Perfectly thrown ball, lots of pressure, and just had to kind of get it the right spot. Maybe not perfectly thrown, but uh, effectively thrown. How about that? It found the target, and Tisdale is able to come down with it. The drive continues, the fourth down conversion. And Porter's back out. I think he's feeling the pain now, that finger. I think you're right. You could tell by the way he threw that ball. That that didn't look normal whatsoever. It, it, so back, it was effective <laughs> first down. Back comes Jarvis Davis, the senior from Freeport, Texas, and handed off and swallowed in the backfield was Donald May, hit for a loss. Porter's coming back in now. They're just they're more effective when they have that option for him to run when he drops back to pass. I mean that's like I said, that's been their best play today. Drop back to pass, nothing clears out, space opens, take off. That's why the fourth and 11 and the fourth and two have been working. May, a loss of two, brings up second and 12 from the Hornets 41. 30 seconds remaining here in the third quarter, a crucial drive for Porter. Takes to the air, has a man complete, and it's a first down, down to the 30. That time, Dallin Smith that tied in with his first reception. I was going to say, I, I like the tight end position. It's it, You don't see it as much in football anymore, but it's still an effective way to move the football. Maybe the final play of the third quarter. Porter with the keeper following his blockers down over the 25. They'll mark him at the 23. On the carry. It'll be second down as we head to the fourth quarter. The drive continues. The Crimson Storm trailing. But trying to stay into this one. The fun town RV Heritage Bowl. Shulman's Movie Bowl Grill offers you a premier dine-in theater experience. Whether you order at the concession stand or from the comfort of your fully reclining seat in the auditorium, delicious items from Billy's Grill and Bar will be delivered directly to you. At Shulman's, we work hard so you can relax and enjoy the entertainment. There's no better place to see a movie than Shulman's Movie Bowl Grill.
Start of the fourth quarter here at the Funtown RV Heritage Bowl in Corsicana. Glad to have you with us. CNBT Stadium at Tiger Field. Emporia State leading Southern Nazarene 48-24. to Alongside Jeff Bauer, I'm Kip McConico. Jeff, we said it at the beginning of this drive, a crucial drive for the Crimson Storm, but they've been able to march down the field. Can they turn it into points? Yeah, you know, again, opportunity here, but once you get closer to the end zone, it's going to be much more difficult to run the football, but we'll see what happens. They do have three receivers out. Look for the tight end as well, maybe. First and 10 from the Hornets, 23. Porter in is the quarterback. Porter takes to the air, has a man too tall for Tisdale. Did appear to catch Emporia State a bit surprised there because uh, there was two men open, uh, just a little bit too high on the pass uh, from Gage Porter. But uh, nonetheless, that was a great play call. I mean, that, that should have worked. That's exactly what they wanted. Tisdale was open, just threw it over the head of the 6'1 senior wide receiver. It's tough to, to move the ball down around the, the red zone, but. And it off bouncing it around the side and out of bounds at the 20. It'll be a gain of three, bringing up third and seven for the storm. Aaron Fellows on the carry. You know, Emporia State has done a good job in this game of sealing the edge and kind of keeping uh, SNU from running to the outside. You know, most of the yardage that you've seen from Gage Porter has come right up the middle uh, following a, a pass play option where he took off and run, uh, they, ran the ball. And they're actually going to say Fellows is able to get across the 20. They're going to say third and five. Fellows is able to pick up a few extra yards before finally going out of bounds. Three wide receivers, Fellows in motion. Porter slips and he goes down. <laughs> Just lost his footing, and now it is going to be fourth and long. And tried to cut back. He saw the pressure coming, and, and good pressure at that right up there. Number 90 making a good stop. He'll get credit for the tackle right there, even though it was more of a slip. Jeremy Alcorn, the redshirt sophomore at Huntington Beach, California. But now it's fourth and nine. Porter, as you would imagine, staying on the field. No point in attempting a field goal. They will go for it. We saw them convert fourth and 11 from the 44. They turned it into a touchdown. Can Porter do the same? Porter has a man. It's complete first down and down to the 10 and knocked back, able to hold on. That time was Asa Robertson. Yeah, they give him the forward progress to the 10 yard line. So should be first and goal now. Nice effort and Gage, nice little touch pass right there, you know, because the fact that we've talked about it with his uh, ring finger, it's tough to have touch on the ball, but he's doing a great job with it there. Knows the ball all that's in, first and goal. All right, Robertson able to get open, held on, but give full credit to Porter battling that injury, the ring finger of his throwing hand. This is his last collegiate game. He does not want to come out. Porter right into the heart of the black and gold defense and the Hornets not allowing him to get free. Number 98, Rafe Goucher, big senior defensive lineman there. Yeah, also Rylan Miller there on the defense, 6'4", 250, he's a junior. I think Porter's going to sleep well on the uh, drive back to Southern Nazarene. Feeling he's going to feel some of the pain in that right ring finger, though. Some adrenaline right now may keep him in this ball game. He's playing through it. But once this wraps up, he's going to certainly feel it. Give him a ton of credit, though. Going through that time, Cepeda with the carry brings it down to the eight. It'll be third and goal from the eight. Bethany, Oklahoma, just outside of Oklahoma City, about four hours north of Corsicana. Of course, Emporia State up in Emporia, Kansas. Just a little further north. And right there between Topeka and Wichita. They're in the east central part of the Sunflower State. The third oldest public university in the state of Kansas. 
160 years old in Poirier State, Southern Nazarene. Not far behind, 124 years old, founded back in 1899. Third and goal from the eight, pressure comes on Porter. Porter, and knocked away, he's trying to find a man. Zach Dorsch Jr., the linebacker, thought he had an interception. Yeah, it's gonna bring up fourth down. He was almost eluded this tackle, but uh, you got to have your, your feet, and uh, no doubt about it, uh, great pressure once again from Emporia State. The Hornets have been swarming, and I've been waiting to say that all day. <laughs> You're right about that. The shoestring tackle. And a timeout taken, 11.07 remaining in the ball game. Their first charge timeout of the half. And the Crimson Storm will take their first time out. Trailing 48 to 24, fourth and goal from the eight in the game. If they're gonna come back, it may come down to this next play, if they can score or not. Well, they've got a couple of touchdowns on fourth down plays. Fourth and second in the first quarter, Brandon in for a touchdown. Fourth and 11 in the second. Brandon in for a 44-yard quarterback scramble, did Porter. So we certainly know what he can do in these situations, but they are three for three on fourth down. As you mentioned, you're inside the red zone down at the eight. The field is condensed. Not as much room for Porter to exploit. But only three, uh, five of 13 on third down plays. So that's why they've had to go for it a few times here, but they've been effective. And it, again, it seems like when they get in that pass formation, just when Emporia State thinks they might throw it, that's when Gage Porter takes off and makes a big play, makes it happen. First winning season as a Division II football program. First ever bowl game for Southern Nazarene. They knew it was going to be a tall task taking on a team the caliber of Emporia State, who's in their third consecutive postseason bowl game. Eighth time in the last 11 seasons they've made a postseason appearance. Here we go, big fourth and goal play. Porter has a man, didn't turn around, the pass was low, and just miscommunication, the timing not there. He's looking for Aaron Fellows, and had that ball been on the money, it would have been six. Once again, pressure up front from Emporia State. Just took the timing off that play just enough to where the receiver had not turned around yet. Pressure came in. Fellows unable to get his head around in time, and it'll be a turnover on downs. Hornets defense able to stand up and they'll get it back. First and ten, ball on their own eight. So they will have to go the length of the field, but at this stage, another touchdown may well secure this victory for Emporia State. Gleason throws to Common, and Common is hit. He'll get back to the original line of scrimmage. No further. That was a dangerous throw. For that was. That had pick six written all over it. But nonetheless, good job coming back. Common making the catch there. That's a receiver bailing out his quarterback right there. Common able to turn it into a gain of one is Ross on the carry. Good to see Ross out there running around. Had that ankle injury earlier and back out on the field. Bring up third down. Ross, a big gain of seven, so third and a very manageable two now. And Comet spins away. He has the first down across the 20. The 20. I thought he was going to be hit for a loss. I would have brought it fourth down, but Comet able to elude the would-be tackler. You know, in the stat book, that looks like an average four to five yard pass play. And instead, that was a first down type play that's going to run another three or four minutes off the clock. That's I mean, that's why those plays are huge. Jeff, that is a great point right there. May have just been a gain of four, but that is a massive play for this ball game. Hornets now at their own 22, first and 10. Gleason looking downfield. And he was trying to find Zimmerman. Zimmerman battling that time in coverage was Seth Spooley. Second down. Pretty well thrown ball right there. It was just great coverage on the other side here from Southern Nazarene doing a nice job 
uh, making plays. Spruell there giving coverage the Friendswood Texas product. Gleason, oh, he had a man. Thomas, oh, excuse me, rather, that was not DeAndre Thomas, and he was had been it wide Kingsley open. Bennett, yep. Yeah, Kingsley was definitely open right there. Just a little bit high on the throw. You know, the one thing, you know, Bennett's also trying to make sure he's in bounds. I mean, there's a lot going on right there on that play. Easier said than done. Whistle before the snap is penalty flag out on the field. It's been a very cleanly played game. Ball start on the offense, number 24. Jeff, I believe that is the now. first false start penalty against Emporia State in this ball game. Yeah, they are fundamentally sound. They don't make many mistakes. They don't beat themselves. They've had a lot of success. Garen Higgins, his side, well coached indeed. You said it, good teams. They. They don't commit those self-inflicted wounds. They don't make those mistakes. You see that at every level. Brayden Gleason talking to the official there. Hey, that was part of our play there. <laughs> Quarterback's always lobbying. That time the official is just saying, okay, sure. Takes to the air, does Gleason, and over the head of Collins, his intended target, threw it into double coverage. You mentioned the sun playing a factor. You can see Gleason before, he's looking over at the sideline into the sun. May have been a bit of a factor there, trying to look back to locate it. We started out in partly cloudy skies, but the sun has been in full force really since about the second quarter. Ross Brungart will punt it away. The conference leader in the MIAA, ninth in the nation in punting. What a weapon he is. Great looking facility here in Corsicana. More on that in just a moment after this play. Emporia State will touch this down at the 42. Crimson Storm still in this one. 9.15 remaining in the ball game. Hi, I'm H.M. Davenport, Navarro County Judge. Navarro County, Texas was founded in 1846 by the first Texas legislature after becoming the 28th state in the union. It was named for a well-known statesman and signer of the Texas Declaration of Independence from Mexico, Jose Antonio Navarro. Navarro County's agricultural roots are still evident today, although its natural landscape has changed over the years with the construction of roads, railroads, interstate highways, and major water storage reservoirs. Navarro County is home to extensive commercial interests, including manufacturing, distribution, retail, restaurants, arts and entertainment, financial organizations, health care, and more. The center of the county lies just 50 miles south of Dallas, making it perfect for business relocation or location. But the cost of living and quality of life available to residents here offer an attractive alternative to urban life as land is inexpensive and abundant and natural resources are plentiful. Come visit Navarro County, Texas and see why we're the best kept secret south of Dallas, Fort Worth. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days, I like to talk about refining character. I think that uh, we're all in process. and. In those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. Nine fifteen remaining in the Fun Town RV Heritage Bowl. Glad to have you with us here at CNBT Stadium at Tiger Field in Corsicana, Texas. Emporia State Hornets leading the Southern Nazarene Crimson Storm, forty-eight to twenty-four. 
Southern Nazarene able to force the punt. Their defense standing strong. Now we'll see what the offense can do, but it is not Gage Porter out there. We've seen the rotation in quarterbacks here in the second half is Jarvis Davis be out there. Porter sustained that injury to his ring finger. There you see the tape on the right hand in the first half is back out alongside Davis. Declan Hobb on the tackle on that last play there, getting a chance to play. Uh, the quarterback keeper Davis across midfield and he's going to be pulled down just shy of the 45 first down you know Davis not just a backup quarterback but you know someone who can uh, get in here and make some things happen when he does get his chance to play he'll be the quarterback next year for this team and interesting to see both Porter and Davis remaining on the field we have not seen that before in the ball game it's been one or the either yeah there you see Davis is in the shotgun, but just to his left is Gage Porter. 22 first downs for there the is. today. <laughs> he's able to find Porter on the reception. And he's upended at the 42-yard line. It'll be a gain of four. We're going to have to check and see how many receptions Gage Porter has this year. <laughs> I like that play, though. That's a nice play. Well, Porter able to get Taking out wide. Second Second According to my stats, Porter does not have a reception well, this season <laughs> until that previous play. There you go. That, that play might have been drawn up this week. Who knows? Second and six. He looks like a, a halfback, fullback style player, doesn't he? He I looks mean, like one of the old school fullbacks that you would see. Great hands. But I think your there Tim Tebow is. analogy oh. is apt. He's hit. Ball is on the turf. Nobody wants it. And Emporia State is going to come away with it. That ball just bouncing around. It's Hornets ball as a late flag comes in. It was recovered by the Hornets, number 36, LeVon Jones. A lot of pressure up the middle. There is going to be a, a late hit uh, right on the end of that play there on the on the on Southern Nazarene. And maybe the storm Personal foul. Trying to do a bit too much there with both quarterbacks on the field at the same time. The result of the play is a fumble. We're covered by the defense. There is no foul in the play. First down before he stays. Mm, no foul. Okay. Picked it up. Yeah, that play was blown up because of good defensive pressure from Emporia State. There was the push I thought they were going to call right there on 78, but he was just finishing the block. A little pancake there. Now Gleason and the black and gold of Emporia State have a chance to put the nail in the coffin as Ross bounces this outside, gets away from a would-be tackler. They're going to mark and we'll see, but it's going to be close to that first down. It may be enough to move the chains. We'll see. Ross is just a pure running back. You know, the fact that he's out on the field speaks a lot. You know, he, he could have just, you know, said, hey, you know, my ankle's not feeling good. I'm, I'm done. But no, look at that. He's still out there playing, performing, showing you his moves. And a gain of exactly 10 for yeah. a first down. Yeah, knew exactly where to go to get that first down. Got right to the sticks. Did Billy Ross Jr., the senior out of Heritage Hall High School in Oklahoma City. Gleason, plenty of time. Looking downfield as a man, a touchdown to Hornets. Tyler Common with his second of the ball game, his 20th of the season. Yeah, Tyler Common, not sure how he can get so wide open. He's definitely, I feel, their best receiver, and he just makes plays after plays. And look at this, wide open in the end zone here. Nice job. You can argue he's not just the Hornets best receiver. You can argue he's the best receiver in the country, leads the country with 20 touchdown receptions this Me year. Too, no doubt, yeah. And you said it. How do you let number three get that wide open? Well, I did notice the defensive back slipped on the play, but nonetheless. The AT is up and good. So it's 625 remaining in the ball game. It's the Hornets on top, 55 to 24.
these are more than just the sounds of a safe place to go after school. These are the sounds of interest being ignited and of mentors making an impact. The sounds of tutoring and tech and health and fitness and arts and music. At Boys and Girls Clubs, we don't do just one thing. We do whatever it takes to meet the needs of every kid who comes through those doors. Because whatever it takes is what it takes to build great futures. Great futures start here. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating nine years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. This is where initiative leads to innovation. where character spurs personal growth. Where young tigers become tomorrow's leaders. Corsicana ISD, every tiger, every day. Tyler Common, his second re touchdown reception of the ball game, 35 yards for the, for the nation's leader in touchdown catches. Now with 20 on the season, our Schulman scoring drive, two plays, 45 yards, took a whopping 38 seconds. I tell you what, that, that was an impressive drive, and uh, I don't, I don't think there's any question that the combination of these two are that's just off the charts. I mean, Braden Gleason, the way he throws the football. But uh, the ability to get common open downfield and, and make plays, that's a, a great combination, those two. A pair of seniors playing in their final collegiate game. Common, the Hayesville, Kansas native out of Campus High School. Obviously, Gleason, the Oklahoma native, redshirt senior, both trying to finish their collegiate career on a high note, as are so many of these young men. 6.15 remaining, and the final result of this one may be not in doubt. But if you're the Crimson Storm, it's been a record-setting season for Southern Nazarene. Their first winning season in Division II, their first bowl game appearance as a member of Division II. A chance to take some momentum at the end of this game into next year. You mentioned some of these young players. They've been here this week. They've had the extra practices leading up to this bowl game want them to have something that they can take into spring ball some positives right keep building you know last they improved on last year's record by game you know next year you're looking at improving on this record from this season and uh, and keep working towards your goals of winning conference and then you know making the, the playoffs that is the ultimate goal to make that division two playoff is around the corner and still on his feet was braxton bird the amarillo texas native here for the Hornets, you know, they've been in the postseason eight of the last 11 seasons. That's where they want to be, not in a bowl game, but in the playoffs. We'll see if they're able to get back there. You know, we were referencing the, the stadium here earlier, Community National Bank and Trust Stadium here, here in Corsicana. Their attendance is 10,001. But that one's very important. Yes, because it's exactly one more than their rival down the road, Ennis High School. And if you know a lot about Texas high school football, you know that that's a common thing here. You've got to be the biggest. You've got to be the best. Everything's bigger in Texas, as they say. This is complete up across the 40. It would be a first down. Asa Robertson with the reception. Crimson Storm not done yet. Continuing to battle, as you would expect. Emporia State, the only team to have appeared here in the Funtown RV Heritage Bowl twice. They won it back in 2018. Looking to be the only team to go 2-0 and in this bowl game. Porter with the keeper, able to elude one and drug down just shy of midfield. It'll be another, well, it's going to be close to a first down and they're going to mark it as a gain of eight. Yeah, right around the 49, maybe 50-yard line there as the clock continues to tick. 
If you're Southern Nazarene at this point, game's probably out of reach. You're thinking, let's put together a nice drive. Let's send our seniors off with a nice little memorable touchdown here. And, you know, 31 points, nothing to, to, to frown upon what their offense has been able to, to do, especially with their quarterback, Porter. Braxton Bird. It's going to be hit for no gain. It'll bring up third and three. Clock continues to tick down. Now just over four minutes remaining. These two quarterbacks, two of the best nine players in Division II football, both Harlan Hill finalists. Nine best players in D2 football. First down picked up, able to sneak his way through. That time was Bellows, the junior out of Alpine, Texas. Late hit, too, at the end of the play. That'll be 15 more yards. A flag tacked on here. What has been a very cleanly played game. Personal foul. Late hit on the defense, number 92. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Well, Fellows had the first down and then the extra 15 tacked on after the late hit by the Hornets. You know, both these teams, they can score with the best of them. Um, just different styles, as we've talked about. Southern Nazarene, more the run-oriented offense, whereas Emporia State, more of the pass, spread it out kind of offense. Emporia State has outscored their opponents in the fourth quarter, 107 to 56. You can add to that today for the season. Uh, they are at 488 total points, so they can score with the best of them, almost 500 for the year. Porter pressured. He's going to go down for a loss all the way back at the 35. It's going to be a loss of eight. The Hornets the Hornets defense defense comes up bring up the second in 18. That defense in, I believe that was David Johnson, the redshirt senior out of Lawrence, Kansas. Local product, if you will, and uh, no doubt a big play. Great opportunity for some of these guys to get into the game here at Emporia State. You know, Market has a loss of nine all the way back at the 36. Clock continues to tick down, now under three minutes remaining. Order. Again, looks to take to the air. He's got a man, but overshot his target. Yeah, his receiver was open just for a split second there, and Porter just sent it a little bit too high. If you're in Emporia State, you know, a win like this, very impressive. They're going to finish the season on a four-game winning streak. You know, and plenty to build on towards next year. You know, you and I talked with Garen Higgins before the, the game that how important it was to not just be known as the coach who wins the bowl games with the coach that goes to the playoffs. And this team looks ripe for the playoffs next season. They do indeed. And this is intercepted, picked off by the Hornets. A chance to return this one up across midfield and knocked down at the 45. And that is going to seal it, you would imagine, intercepted by Bo Odom, the redshirt junior out of Ada, Oklahoma. Great play right there from Bo Odom, kind of playing center field, if you will, just kicking back and making the play. And a nice return, too, on top of that. First interception for either team today. Aiden, not, not too far from uh, where the team they're playing against. So the Nazarene is located. They're over in Bethany. But the, yep, get out the, uh, the WWE belt there. <laughs> I, there's an opportunity, you know, for the defense to shine here. But now the offense, we're going to see some new faces on the field now for Emporia State. And, uh, and, you know, this is that moment where, you know, for a lot of these kids, this could be their last few snaps as well. They could indeed. Just two and a half minutes remaining in the ball game, And this may well... You said we're going to see a new quarterback for the Hornets as Chase Ricky comes in, the Tulsa product. A lot of new faces here at the end, but Thomas not a new face. We've seen DeAndre Thomas in the ball game. He's part of that trio of running backs alongside Bennett and Ross. 
And I can tell that uh, Gleason and Ricky probably have the same barber, which is no barber. <laughs> Both of them let their hair grow, enjoy their, their season here. You say that. Gleason got a haircut before this game. He made a point of mentioning that. He said he was going to have to do some appearances. Obviously, a Harlan Hill finalist. He's got to be out there talking to some folks. So he got a haircut before this game. I'm thinking his teammate cut his hair, don't you think? I mean, you know. Thomas again on the carry. That one I don't know. Come on, man. In college? See, there's always a barber on the team. How about that? Oh, at least always. one. Absolutely. Every football team I've ever covered, there's always one guy. Hey, I'm the guy that cuts the hair. There the is players. a bar Right you are. It's usually a guy that doesn't play very often, but, uh, you know, he's got his role. He's busy. He's got a lot to do. It's just a minute 20 remaining in this one. Again, take one last time to thank all of our sponsors. What a great event this has been. Just a fantastic week here at the Funtown RV Heritage Bowl and Community Bank and Trust Stadium at Tiger Field. And with that, I'd like to thank again the Corsicana, Corsicana, Corsicana the Visitors Bureau, Community National Bank and Trust of Texas, Collins Street Bakery. Shulman's MBG all in one family fun and Chick-fil-A and also big thanks to Eric Bonner our Heritage Bowl director and his entire staff for putting on this wonderful event both teams I can tell had a great time all the local community events the banquet you were able to attend maybe the highlight at least for me the high five Friday out at the local schools <laughs> they made a lot of kids not days but weeks and the Hornets Maybe looking for one more with some fresh faces in. Jackson Novacek there. The red shirt junior from Olathe, Kansas, with his first reception. Hey, and special thanks to Trip Shannon, the uh, SID over at Emporia State. I, I waited on their team coming out of the uh, the movie theater to, uh, to chat with us, and I always appreciate the fact that, you know, giving a, an impromptu interview opportunity with the head coach, so. You know how that goes. Yeah, with that, big thanks to Don Weiss there at Emporia State. Julie Schwake at Southern Nazarene for all of their assistance leading up to this ball game as this is going to wrap up and it will be Emporia State with the victory as the Hornets second trip here to Corsicana. And they come away with their second victory, the final 55 to 24 Emporia State on top of Southern Nazarene. One time RV Heritage Bowl, the weather perfect, the game lived up to the expectations. That Emporia State offense ultimately able to come away with the victory as they will move to nine and three. That being said, it's a bright future for the Crimson Storm, Jeff. Well, the two quarterbacks lived up to the billing. I can tell you that uh, Porter did finish with 272 yards rushing and uh, three touchdowns, so very impressive for him. But uh, I don't think there's any question that uh, Emporia State, with the victory, their quarterback, Braden Gleason, gets my vote for player of the game, if you will. And, and I feel like uh, Emporia State showed that why they are who they are, why they've been so successful over the last 15 or so years. Right, you're exactly right. A team that eight of the last 11 years has made the postseason. You can certainly see why. Coach Aaron Higgins in his 16th year in charge of his alma mater. They have it humming. And Gleason did finish with 405 yards passing. How about that? And not to mention six touchdowns. So impressive. Impressive to say the least. And I have a feeling he's going to make a statement as one of the Harlan Hill Award, maybe. Yeah. We'll see. And Brian Shea of Emporia State won the Harlan Hill Award in record-setting fashion back in 1998. Could there be a second Hornet to win it this year? We will see if Braden Gleason can bring that title back to Emporia, Kansas, as well as his Heritage Bowl trophy. 55 to 24, the final. Emporia State on top. Again, huge thanks to our entire crew for joining us here today in beautiful Corsicana, Texas. A great way to wrap up the season. Just one of four Division II bowl games in the country. And these two teams may not have made the playoffs, but they have a lot to be proud of. Yeah, and a shout out also for Corsicana, all the, the folks here. It's been a, a great experience and a, another great bowl game here in uh, the North Texas area. You're exactly right. The state of Texas 
Some great football as we take a look at our final stats. Here is the game summary. Time of possession heavily in favor of Southern Nazarene. Which was to be expected. It was indeed, but just 122 yards through the air compared to 424 through the air for Emporia State. Yeah, Emporia State, very impressive uh, the way they were able to, 554 total yards. I mean, obviously a little bit more balance. They were able to run, but uh, extremely good with the passing. And, uh, and how about the first downs, 25 to 19. They did a nice job on third downs as well, converting half of those, 6 of 12. So, But Emporia State with an impressive win, and I don't think there's any question, uh, a very deserving victory as they finish the season 9-3. and three. All Right you are. A great way to wrap up the season. That'll do it for us, for our entire crew. From our broadcast partner, Jeff Bauer, I'm Kip McConico saying goodbye from Corsicana, Texas. The Funtown RV Heritage Bowl, the final score. Emporia State 55, Southern Nazarene 24. We'll see you next year. My name is Katrina, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A nugget trays is that they're a mouthful of awesome. That first bite gives you that full flavor. During the holidays, Chick-fil-A catering can help with bringing my family together, and that makes your heart sing. Hey, this is Brian, and the little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A nugget trays is the joy that it brings to me and everybody around me during the holidays. They're warm, juicy, and delicious. When you walk in the room, everybody just starts smiling. <laughs>